Council. Today is Tuesday, January 12th. I am Nuri Martinez, the President of the City Council. Madam Clerk, can you please take the roll? Council Member Blumenfield. Blumenfield present. Bonin. Bonin present. Buscaino. Council Member Buscaino. Cedillo. Cedillo President. De Leon. Here. Harris Dawson. Here. Correct. Can you get my glasses, please? Krikorian. Lee. Present. Martinez. Present. O'Farrell. Present. Price. Raman. Present. Ridley Thomas. Here. Rodriguez. Here. 12 members present and a quorum, Madam President. Okay, first order of business. Madam President, can you hear me? Damn, I'm having some audio issues. Excuse me, members, can you please mute yourselves? Thank you. First order of mm -hmm. business. Approval Buscaino of the present. Uh, for the record, Council Member Buscaino is present. 13 members present and a quorum, Madam President. Okay, first order of business. Approval of the minutes of December 15th. Okay, Mr. Blumenfield moves and Ms. Rodriguez seconds next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. Lee moves and Mr. Bonin seconds next. Madam President, today is Tuesday and time for the flag salute. Ms. Rahman, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For the record, Madam Clerk, we've got Mr. Kokorna and Mr. Cedillo, both present. Member, let's go ahead and run through the agenda. Madam, Madam President, would council like all items to go forthwith today? Without objection, that will be the order next. There is a request from a council member to receive and file item one. Okay, without objection, that will be the order next. Item one is an item notice for public hearing. Items two through 11 are items for which public hearings have been held. For item two, a corrected housing committee report has been uploaded to the council file. Items 12 through 18 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Item 12 should be held on the desk for an amendment. 10 votes are required for consideration. Okay, without objections, those items are now before us. Members, are there any specials? Mr. Blumenfield? Thank you. I'd like to call item three special for comments. Any others? That's it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bonnet? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Happy New Year. Uh, on item number 12, just a technical correction. Uh, the uh, item before us says extend until uh, the end of March 2020. It should read 2021, obviously. That'll be it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and second that it's a technical amendment to item number 12 by Mr. Bonin. Any others, Mr. Bonin? No, thank you. Mr. Gakoria? Mr. Thank Kukorian. you, Madam President. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year, colleagues. Uh, Madam President, I'd like to call item number two special uh, for purposes of moving the Budget and Finance Committee report on file. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and second that. Any others? Any other specials, members? Okay, seeing none. Um, members, we have two specials today. Um, the first one is on the changes to committee jurisdic jurisdictions, and the second one is on the new committee schedule. Both of these motions and reso will be posted after this meeting. 
So let's go ahead and vote on the findings before we take public comment. Council Member Blumenfield. I'm sorry, what are we, uh, I, we're voting on findings for what? For special one and special two. Okay, uh, Blumenfield, aye. Thank you. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo. Aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Caretz. Aye. Kerkorian. Council Member Kerkorian. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Council Member Price. Raman. Aye. Ridley Thomas. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. 13 ayes. The findings are adopted. Okay, let's go ahead and go ahead and into general public comment. Um, Madam Clerk, did you want to go ahead and read the calling information followed by the city attorney? Certainly, Madam President. Would you like to vote on some of the other items? Oh, thank you. I apologize. Yes, tell me what the items are that are eligible for us to vote. At this time, council may vote on item two and items four through 11. Okay, let's go ahead and vote on these items. Let's go ahead and please call the roll. Council Member Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo. Aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Caretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Raman. Aye. Ridley Thomas. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. 14 ayes. These items are adopted. Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Go ahead and read out the um, quality information for public comment. Thank you, Madam President. And as indicated on the agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Finally, when you hear the last four digits of your phone number, press star six. And again, members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and press pound. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. And finally, when you hear the last four digits of your phone number, press star six. Members of the public calling in, when it's your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute to, per item to speak, up to three minutes total, and if you wish, one minute for general public comment. Please speak on the items first before providing general public comment. We'll tell you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you're not speaking on topic, or if we can't tell whether you're speaking on an agenda item, you'll get one brief warning from me or the president. If you do not immediately get clearly on topic or again stray off topic, the president will cut you off and you'll forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we'll move on to the next speaker. We'll take 30 minutes total of public comment. The items that are open for public comment are items 12 through 18 and then special one and special two. Finally, for members of the public calling in to speak, as soon as you hear someone address you, 
uh, or read out the last four digits of your phone number or other identifying information if you're calling in with a block number. That means you're live in the council meeting, it's your turn to speak, and you should press star six immediately to let us know which items you want to speak on. So we understand that you may be listening to the meeting also on your computer, channel 35, or other device, but please keep your one ear on the phone for when we call out your identifying information because you to press star six because there's a brief time delay between the live broadcast and, or between the broadcast and the live meeting and it will cause a lot of confusion and we may think you're no longer on the line if you don't speak up soon. Um, and if you are on another device, as soon as you hear your identifying information called out, please turn down the volume on the other devices so we avoid feedback and confusion because of the time delay. Thank you, Madam President. We're ready to take public comment. Great, thank you. Let's go ahead and take the first caller. Caller with the phone number ending in 6068, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, this is Richie Serjenko. I uh, just want to give general public comment, please. Sure, you have one minute. Please begin. Hi, yeah. Uh, welcome back, council members. I hope you had a good vacation. Um, Los Angeles is currently the uh, epicenter for COVID uh, and the worldwide epicenter for COVID. Um, so hopefully we see a change of course, a, a change of action, because doing the same things that has, have been done since last March are not going to lead us uh, anywhere it's in a positive way. Um, we will continue, you all will continue to fail the city. People will continue to die at record rates. Um, I'm also calling in to demand that you guys stop the sweeps and order the commandeering of hotels. Um, you know, I don't know why we would be sweeping any unhoused Angelinos during a COVID surge. Um, Care Plus sweeps force unhoused residents to move all their belongings and relocate, which are, is in a direct violation of the CDC guidelines. Um, you all should not uh, um, fall victim to Joey Bucket, fear mongering, um, and Joey. Thank uh, you, next and speaker. Caller with a phone number ending in 8420, please press star six. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name, my name is Astrid Coda, and I would just like to give general public comment. You have one minute, go ahead. Okay, so um, yeah, COVID is worse in LA. Um, then when city, when you guys voted to suspend Care Plus sweeps, um, you know, these sleeps pose a greater risk than before to the unhoused and to the house community. No one should be going into non-essential work right now, let alone for something so inhumane. How can you make people go harass homeless people? That just doesn't, it's sickening, it's sickening. I'm, I'm getting angry. Um, we agree with prioritizing public health and addressing homelessness and fighting COVID. To address some of the concerns with, of encampments, such as trash, we can start by increasing regular trash, uh, trash pickups and access to sanitation services like restrooms. These are things that will help manage encampments and address public health concerns. Hand washing stations, laundry, garbage cans, regular trash pickups, showers, showers, uh, beds, uh, and pest control. Sweeps continue to destroy life, saving medicine, birth certificates, irreplaceable belongings. Stop Thank wasting you. our tax dollars and inflicting harm. Caller with the phone number ending in 1248, please press star six. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, uh, this is Mimi. I'd like to speak on item 15 and give general public comment, please. Could you, you have one minute for each, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so item 15 is the um, state of emergency that LA is in, obviously we should extend this because of how bad COVID is right now in LA. I know you guys know the stats. Um, we need to be prioritizing Angelina's health. And to do that, we should cancel all the sleep. That's not prioritizing our health. We're in a state of emergency or, and you guys need to extend it. Um, the care plus sleep 
they just end up charming communities more. Um, and also the parking restrictions. I don't understand if we're in a state of emergency, why those are being enforced, why you guys are handing out tickets. If we're supposed to be, you know, sheltering in place, where are we supposed to move our car for a few hours? That makes no sense to me. You guys should also uh, cancel those again. Um, Go ahead and move on to your general public comment, please. Okay, thank you. Um, Mary, uh, I have not forgotten how immediately after the last meeting of 2020, you went on Twitter and you gaslit your community. Um, you really tried to include yourself as one of the activists who has had to step up because you and other city council members want to your job. And then we call, like, and then you said, we who call in to hold you all accountable, we aren't real activists. Um, you said people don't want handouts. Is that how you justify not giving people anything they need to survive? You also dismissed all valid criticism of you as being sexist. It's not sexist to critique you, point out that people have died due to your inaction. I will never support people calling you slaves, but you know damn well the people who do. They're not one of us who call in. We need you to step up. We need everybody to step up. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending in 7719. Please press star six. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Thank you. It's uh, Eric Previn, and I'd like to speak on the available items and a general public comment. Thank you. You have three minutes on the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Okay, I'll try, I'll try to be as, uh, as brief as I can. A great work uh, on putting up the Brady Bunch grid. We can see the, the various council members, and I think that's helpful. Uh, there is a small problem with getting on the phone, you can't hear the beginning part of the meeting until public comment is called, so that's a snafu we need to work on. But the dockless mobility, uh, 430 grand that we're gonna be able to gather by doing the kind of, um, you know, licensing with these companies is uh, good work. We're finding money wherever we can. This is a critical, obviously scooters are a top priority now as people are going out of business completely drying up. We need the money. Um, Item number 14, I just want to call attention to the lobbyist on this one, Craig Lawson. It's 350 South Figueroa, so this is right in the heart of corruption town, CD14. The question is Donna Shen Tripp, T-R-I-P-P. -P. Any relation to the great trip from Monica Rodriguez's district and then Englander, now we're right at the epicenter of the FBI. I don't know, Doug Tripp's moved over to LADWP where everybody's clean, so it's unclear, but I just noticed the similarity. If they were a power couple, that would be just extraordinary. Um, one thought is, though, rather than um, spending 1.5, uh, we have 1.5 million in the innovation fund, which I think is a great sum. We're spending 30 on a solar uh, cell phone charger for the zoo during the pandemic. It's not an expenditure that I disagree with. It's a good idea to have people be able to charge their systems. but. But how about take the 1.49 million remaining and push it out the door to the people, who, like the renters or the restaurant workers or the people. And what about the mayor's fund? There was all this money, and then we learned that Rick Jacobs, the guy gathering it up across the state of California and the nation, uh, you know, is busy fondling the LAPD. This is a bad, this is not a good area for the city of Los Angeles. And I am hoping that special one and special two, um, which I've not been able to identify on the the interface here. I'm looking, I've got my computer up, but I don't see special one, special two, so I'll limit my comment. And I'll go right to, um, you know, I guess my general public comment, which is, uh, has to do with when we got into this pandemic mess, the governor uh, made it so that he urged you and the Board of Supervisors to use sound discretion and to make reasonable efforts to adhere as closely as reasonable possible to the you know, open government meeting rules and to conduct public meetings in order to maximize transparency and to provide the public access to their meetings. Now, today, the Board of Supervisors sat behind closed doors with the brand new Holly Mitchell and talked about who the hell knows what and are still talking about it. 
This is an unacceptable turn of events. We are not the Congress. The U.S. Congress has gone into closed session approximately four times in the last century. So I do not understand why we are sneaking around. Corcoran does it in budget and finance and has a very non-disclosy meeting about stuff that we should be aware of, about our real estate, about our legal trouble. We have legal trouble. Legal trouble comes from the fact that these solutions are being adjudicated in private with Fauble, who is giving bad advice because he doesn't like messy. Thank you, Mr. Previn. Okay, members, I'm going to go ahead and pause public comment. There's two members that would like to introduce uh, two Rule 23s. They're similar, so I would hope that you guys can combine them. We have to vote on the findings before I can resume public comment. Mr. Harris Dawson, did you want to speak to the Rule 23 you want to introduce? I cannot continue public comment until this gets resolved. I'll defer to uh, Mr. Blumenfeld. Mr. Blumenfeld, do you want to speak to your Rule 23? Yeah, I think both of us have similar resolutions, and it deals with the the crisis facing our nation right now, with um, the the uh, you know seditious attack on the Capitol, and specifically the Congress's uh, move to potentially. Uh, impeach this president and uh, and or use the invoke the 25th amendment. Uh, I haven't actually seen Mr. Uh, Harris Dawson's amendment, but I'm it's very similar. Both of us have amendments to support any actions in Congress to do just that. And obviously that's the 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 time urgency is is pretty clear. Uh, this, you know, there there is a, a danger in having this president continue, and the idea is to support the Congress in their efforts to remove him. Mr. Harris Dawson, do you want to speak to your Rule 23? They're similar, so I'm going to go ahead and request that we combine both without objection. Yes, Mr. Uh, Harris that, Dawson. that's fine. I just wanted to, uh, again, press the need for us to make the findings. There's no way we could have known there would have been a, there was going to be a riot insurrection and attempted coup on the Capitol um, early enough uh, to have gotten this motion uh, to be properly noticed. And so we call for the findings uh, that allow us to do a Rule 23 and vote on this item today in advance of Congress's vote uh, tomorrow. All right, thank you, uh, gentlemen. We're gonna go ahead and vote on the findings before we can resume public comment. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. And this is on the findings for special three. Council Member Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo. Aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Koretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Raman. Aye. Ridley Thomas. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. 15 ayes, these findings are adopted. Okay, Mr. Blumenfield and Mr. Harris Dawson, please circulate the language um, as special three so we can vote on it. Not now, but you need to circulate the language as soon as possible. Thank you. Let's go ahead and go back to a public comment. And go ahead, take the next speaker. If I, if I may, Madam President, so if any of the speakers who already called in want to speak on special three, they can dial back that in and they can speak on just that item. And Go ahead I, and take the next speaker. And if I may, just one other thing. On um, item number four, I should note, which is the CEQA, um, excuse me, it's item number 14, the Sustainable Communities Environmental Assessment. Uh, what we're having is the hearing for that item. So please go ahead. Caller with the phone number ending in 9743, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on.
caller. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Tommy Fava, and I want to speak on item number 14. Could you have um, one minute? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You have one minute. Go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Tommy Fava, and I, want, I am speaking on behalf of item number 14. And uh, we are, um, and I belong with IBEW Local 11, and we are fully in support of this project. Uh, for us, projects like this one are the best guarantee for our livelihood. The applicant is committing to area wage standards and to hiring local skilled labor. These benefits keep hardworking people in their home and able to provide for their families. I speak for all of us. Please support middle class jobs and worker benefits for approving this project, SKIA. Thank you. Okay, next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 9398, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Good morning, my name is Shamari Davis and I'd like to speak on, speak on item 14. Okay, you have one minute, go ahead. Hello, my name is Shamari Davis. I'm with IBW Local 11, the Electricians Union, and I want to support this project in item number 14. The applicant has pledged to uphold, you know, the best pro practices and development. They've agreed to hire locally, which we're very excited about, use dependable contractors, and hire local labor across industries. Thus, to the building trade, to IBW Local 11, this is incredibly huge, and we support our families to make sure they have stable lives because projects like this help us to achieve the American dream, and that's very, very important to us. Um, we are confident and we are happy that uh, this will be approved by our local leaders, and we want to please approve the project's environmental assessment. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 3534, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 3534, please press star six. Please state Hi, your name. Hi, my name is Rebecca Morse, and I'd like to speak on general public comment. Go ahead, you have one minute. Hi, I'm a deputy city attorney with the city of Los Angeles, and I'm calling to urge council to take up and pass as soon as possible the paid parental leave proposal and draft ordinance that CAO has transmitted uh, after five years uh, of deliberation. Uh, since the proposal was originally introduced uh, by council. And this is council file 151033. Um, I am at home now with a one month old and I'm not entitled to a single hour of paid family leave currently as a city employee. Um, luckily, and I think I have a privilege that probably a lot of city employees don't have, I have accrued enough vacation and sick and overtime to partially pay for my own leave. But without the implementation of this paid family leave, proposal which will offer city employees 240 hours of paid leave. I'll have to choose between going back to work before I am legally required to and when my child is still too young to quit in daycare and going without pay. And I may even be in a position where I have to reimburse the city for my own health care um, because I have been out of work without pay. Um, so this proposal is important. I, I applaud the council. Thank, Thank you, you. Speaker. Uh, Thank you. Move on to the next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 5314, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hey, this is Kessler and I'd like to speak on item 15 and general public comment. Could you have one minute for each? Go ahead. Awesome. Well, welcome back, everyone. I hope you slept really well in your comfy beds and houses while all our unhoused neighbors were on the street and you continued to sleep. So for item number 15, clearly we are in a state of emergency. So you should clearly seize the hotels, house the unhoused, and do your fucking job. Stop ticketing our cars. Like, be normal human fucking beings. And it's hilarious that I just heard you guys say we had no idea an insurrection would happen when there's literally white supremacist mobs all over LA. Look at Sunland Tahunga, look at Beverly Hills, look at the anti-maskers in Westfield. They're literally all over LA. We're no better than what happened in DC. 
like, and, I, and the fact that Nuri said we're not activists calling in, honey, sweetie, we are the activists. Because mutual aid right now is winning in Los Angeles and city council is failing. Mutual aid is the only thing keeping people afloat nowadays. We are the ones making sure people who are beaten down by white supremacists have GoFundMe. We are the ones going out with packages of food and gloves and clothing to the unhoused people when you're just sweeping them like they're not even fucking human beings. I literally don't... It is disgusting. I say this every time I call in. I cannot wait to vote you all fucking out. You are despicable excuses for human beings. You are vile. And it's clear how much you hate poor people. It's disgusting. And Nuri, you are Van Nuys representative. Have you been to Van Nuys? Have you talked to anyone on the street? They are human beings. Wake the fuck up. I yield my time, you assholes. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 1721. Please press star six. Please state Hello, your name um, uh, and the item you'd like yeah, to speak uh, on. My name, totally. My name's Sachin. I'm going to do general public comment and then um, item 15. Item 16 and general public comment? Okay, why uh, don't 15, you go, yeah, yeah. Okay, then go ahead and start on the sure. item. You have one minute and then you can move on to general public comment. Go ahead. Uh, okay, sure, I'll do it in that order. Uh, so, yes, uh, I'll just echo what a lot of people have said about this, uh, which is that the CEC uh, has been clear. The forced placements of unhoused neighbors are uh, it, it's dangerous right now. I urge you to follow their guidelines. This council did the right thing at the beginning of the pandemic when it suspended care plus cleanups and to resume them now at the worst point in this COVID outbreak is extremely dangerous. Uh, similarly, allowing hotels to remain vacant while people die on the streets is inhumane, and I urge you to take steps to commandeer those rooms. Um, I'll go to general public comment now. Um, so yeah, so um, I'm on the Echo Park Neighborhood Council and I serve as a chair of the Homelessness and Housing Committee. Um, so of course my opinions that I express here are my own. Last night we unanimously passed a community impact statement supporting the motion that council members Raman and Krikorian brought forward aiming to cite a navigation center in CD4. In our community impact statement though, we urge council members Cedillo and O'Farrell to work together to bring forward a similar motion for Echo Park. Uh, we'll be following up with your teams, but I'm here to encourage y'all to do so personally. We desperately need resources and services in our community, and a navigation center is a crucial component of that. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 4208. Please press star six. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, hi, this is Rob Kwan. I'd like to speak on um, item 15, all the specials and general public comment. Sure. So you have three minutes for all your items and one minute for general public comment. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, you know, item 15 is related to our current state of emergency and, and it feels a bit weird to say we're in a state of emergency when our council has canceled over a third of the meetings last year. Um, last meeting, council president had a dozen people in the chambers with her at one point and still refused to wear a mask. Um, it's good to see that change today. But um, you know, let's look back at this last month. Again, we're in a state of emergency, but you just spent nearly a month in recess. And in that time, um, we've had 388 and 928,000 new COVID cases in LA County, 42% of the total infection for this entire pandemic in LA County. Um, we had 3,956 deaths, 32% of the total deaths during this entire pandemic in LA County. Um, you're, again, you're not acting like this is an emergency. In, in those emergency powers, you have the power to commandeer. And the billionaire owner of the LA Times is sitting on a vacant hospital that was recently used to film uh, movies um, and, and now has been shut down and sits empty as healthcare gets rationed, um, ambulances get turned away. Sure, staffing's a problem and a challenge, but this is the city of LA. Where is the actual renewed effort to, you know, marshal up whatever resources we can so people don't just have to fucking die without getting treated? Um, turning to the specials, um, it, it's just a little weird to hear the, the findings announced for the first two items. Uh, I, I don't know how this really fits into the Brown Act, but um, all right. I, I, I think uh, there's 
particular problems because none of these specials are posted and that's really problematic with the committees and the timing because you're voting on something that we can't see. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I've seen the committee assignments, but like some of that stuff is still out there. And it just seems really weird that we're not able to see something before you vote on it. How are we supposed to give any kind of meaningful public comment? Um, turning to my general public comment, I, I, I uh, you know, want to give a congratulations to Council President Martinez on getting, um, you know, that slush fund vetoed. It was funny to hear you say that you were shocked um, by the mayor's decision. Uh, we know Eric Garcetti, and there's no way he would have vetoed that thing without talking to you many a time before. Um, it was also really funny to hear Councilmember Harris Dawson describe what he said as progressive gobbledygook. Um, you know, I, I would describe what you did. Uh, best case scenario, just gobbledygook. Worst case scenario, um, complete bullshit. Uh, you can do a whole lot better with $90 million. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to just turn to John Lee, Stafford B., some very interesting developments with the FBI there. I think it's really fascinating to see how long this council is just watching him and has taken no action when it becomes transparently clear uh, just what he was into. Um, may, maybe he'll be turning Thank evidence you. over Next soon. Next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 5554, please press star six. Hello. Hello. What items would you like to speak uh, on? I'm Sean Murphy of the third district. I want to speak on general public comment and 15. Okay, you have one minute for your item and one minute for general yeah. public comment. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, did you get my message? Uh, yeah. Item 15 is the coronavirus. A lot of people are getting tired of the restrictions. They're tired of staying home. They're tired of help. Everybody's tired of it. I wish we get back to normal. The health department should know, should know better than that. They want to lock us down purpose permanently. They, I'm against that. Let me go on to my general public comment. Okay. Yeah, Sean, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to miss Tom LeBlanc. I'm sure you got my message. He was a good councilman. I'm going to miss him, and I still have, I still feel sorry for his family. I send my condolences again. I miss talking to my fans. I want to say hello to the new councilmen of the 10th and the 4th districts. You have got another nice lady with pretty hair. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. It's nice to hear from you. Yeah, I hope we can get back. I can get back to City Hall. And by the way, we're going to adjourn in Mr. Labonge's memory at the end of the meeting. So stay tuned, okay? All right. Thank you. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Nice, nice talking to you. Next speaker. Thank you, Sean. Call in user number one. Please press star six. Yeah, I'd like to speak on um, item 15 and general public comments, please. Okay, you have two minutes, one minute for each. Go ahead. Okay, so, um, yeah, item 15, um, you know, we're, we're still in this pandemic, so it's really interesting to see what our city council people have been up to. Uh, Joey Buckets, busy making some pathetic video. Joey, we don't call you Joey Buckets for any reason having to do with basketball. We call you Joey Buckets because you're a bucket of shit. Get your priorities in check. That video was totally unnecessary. Get some services to people in your district. Uh, Bob Blumenfeld, what were you up to over the break? Oh, that's right. You got caught feeding a CIS to one of the neighborhood councils in your district. Your office wrote the CIS. Absolutely pathetic. And we caught you. One second. Staffer B, what were you up to? S speaker, oh, that's already, right. Sorry, can we just hold the time for a second? Speaker, did you already dial in and speak to council before? No, I did not. All right. Stop interrupting, Fauble. Uh, uh, please go ahead then. You don't have to be rude. <laughs> okay, after you interrupt me. Stafford B, we another uh, bombshell drops on you. This time, 
you're named. You're named in these in these uh, documents. So you can't, there's no more plausible deniability around, about who Stafford B is. It's you. You need to resign. Uh, I'll move on to general public comment. Uh, I just want to review Nuri's uh, speech from the last uh, council meeting of 2020. Totally grotesque, cynical weaponization of uh, identity politics, which is her favorite thing to do. Nuri, pe people are not calling into these meetings to criticize you for sexism or anything like that. We're criticizing you because you've presided over this council as LA has become the hotspot for COVID in the whole world. We criticize you because four unhoused Angelinos die every day while you do nothing. We criticize you because you canceled one third of the city council meetings in 2020. We criticize you because you start every council meeting late and limit public comment to 30 minutes while there's 80 people on the line. You show your disdain for us every day. So we call in to show our disdain for you. You have Thank presided you very much, over speaker. the- Thank you so much. Um, next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 2378, please press star six. Good please morning. State uh, your name and the Scott items Frazier. you'd like to speak on. Yeah, my name is Scott Frazier, and I just want to give general public comment. Okay, you have one minute. Go ahead. Thank you. Members of the city council, you all already know, but I think many of my fellow Angelinos might not, that seated on the virtual dais with you twice a week is unindicted co-conspirator city staffer B, otherwise known to the United States Attorney's Office. <laughs> Uh, sorry, John Lee, but he is known to the U.S. Attorney's Office as City Staffer B. This is a, a major issue that's been going on in our city for far too long, the rank corruption that we have on this civic body. We received confirmation last night from the federal government that John Lee is Staffer B in communications between Mitch Englander and an informant, Andy Wang. So what we want to know as citizens is why has city council done nothing about this? You say you're waiting for the FBI, but there's no reason for you to do that. You have all the levers that you need. And yet council president Martinez has rewarded him with more committee meetings, more power and just an unchecked ability to Thank abuse you. the Thank public you, speaker. Next speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 0585, please press star six. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Caller. Can you hear me? Yes, please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Name is Michael Koenig calling from CD4. I'd like to speak on item 15 and general public comment. Okay, you have one minute for each, go ahead. Council members, the word of the day is compassion. I know that many of the callers here are prone to call you names, probably deserved, but I am asking you to think and feel as human beings, as our neighbors in this city, and as the people who really have a chance to do something meaningful for people in trouble. The CDC has been perfectly clear on their guidelines on what we must do to escape from this pandemic, to continue care sweeps during this time, not only flies in the face of the best public health guidance, but it suggests a deep malicious cruelty in our city council. Your constituents don't want that. We want health and we want wellness. I urge you to stop the sweeps as you did smartly at the beginning of this pandemic before the surge was as bad as it is now. Stop it. General comment. You are a powerful body. 
you can do much good for this city. To have in your midst someone who is under investigation by the FBI, City Staffer B, a.k.a. John Lee, it's not a good look for you. While you are busy putting together self-congratulatory proclamations about the insurrection in the Capitol, I urge you please to look close to home and start cleaning house. You have the stain of corruption upon this legislative body. Thank you, Speaker. Okay, let's, uh, that concludes public comment. So let's go ahead and vote on the following items. Madam Clerk, let's go ahead and vote on item 13. Item 15 through 18, there's been a request by Mr. De Leon to speak on item 14, so let's go ahead and hold that on the table. So let's go ahead and vote on item 13, 15 through 18. And 12 as amended by Mr. Bonin. Go ahead and please call the roll. Councilmember Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Harris Dawson. Caretz. Aye. Krikorian. Krikorian. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Councilmember Price. Aye. Rahman. Aye. Ridley Thomas. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. 14 ayes, these items are adopted. 12 is adopted as amended. Okay, let's move on. Um, to item number three, this was called special by Mr. Blumenfield. Thank you, ma'am. Um, recognized now, I speak? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Item okay, number three. Thank you, uh, Madam President. So, colleagues, the, corona, the coronavirus pandemic has been de had a devastating impact on all of us, and it's had a devastating impact on our businesses, especially restaurants and nightclubs. Many of these businesses have shuttered permanently, as we all know. And when life returns to normal, property owners are going to try to attract new tenants. But for businesses that, for the ones that have managed to survive, we still don't know what that will mean in terms of social distancing, spacing of tables, the need for continued expansion of outdoor dining, et cetera. Now, even before the pandemic, a lot of those uh, who sought to open restaurants or bars, they complained legitimately about a lot of red tape and delays that they had in obtaining approvals and a variety of unnecessary and outdated requirements. In order to promote economic recovery and ensure a vital Los Angeles economy for years to come, uh, I introduced a motion to have the Economic and Workforce Development Department with various city departments, building and safety, planning, sanitation, engineering, transportation, fire, police, DWP, et cetera, and, and representatives of the food and beverage industry develop a set of recommendations to streamline city policies. Together, this working group came up with about 30 different recommendations. By approving this report today, we're going to ask the various city departments to report back in greater detail on each of these recommendations. Some of them are very simple, like continuing and expanding the use of electronic submissions and video appointments, using technology to immediately inform applicants when plan corrections are available, and ensuring that at the start of the process, applicants understand all approvals that will be required. Some are very important, but are gonna require a little bit more careful consideration, such as following the lead of cities like New York and Chicago and allowing licensed architects to self-certify tenant improvements and so on small construction projects, uh, and, and to certify small construction projects. And some of them are gonna require further involvement by non-industry stakeholders including continuation and expansion of programs like the Alfresco program and food pickup zones. Adoption of this package, while not a final decision on any of the recommendations, sends a clear message to our restaurants and our bars 
and to property owners and business districts that the city will partner in ensuring economic recovery and continued vitality for our commercial corridors. Now credit for this, uh, the effort belongs to everyone who participated in this working group and there were a lot of people. I'm sure I'm missing some, I wanna name a few of those folks uh, because they have been working hard and also to give you a sense of what this effort has entailed. Um, from EWDD, Vanessa Willis led the effort, but also Carolyn Hud, Fred Jackson, Dicey Hernandez, Jackie uh, Rodriguez, Kisi Hansilas, Yovana Perez, uh, Nisi Buck, and uh, Rosa Penal uh, Penaloza. From Building and Safety, we had Michael McCain, uh, Salvador Quintilla, Eugene Barbaro, uh, Charmy Hugh, and Adam Burgess. From Planning, Andrew Pennington, Phyllis Nathanson, Maya Zev, Maritza Pretzkop, Ralph Avila, and Vanessa Soto. Bureau of Engineering, Ramsey Swaya uh, and Carl Mills. Fire Department, we had uh, Chief Melford Beard, Captain Leroy Rogers, Captain Dwayne Laurent, Andrew Coe, Oscar Sol uh, Salgado, uh, Manila Agahia, I, I apologize for butchering some of the names, Cheryl Gutzia and Hani Malki, and from DOT. Uh, in fact, I'm not gonna read all the names. I have a lot of names on this list, but we had a lot of folks from DOT, from the Small Business Commission, from LA Public Health, from LA County Small Business Sector. Uh, we also had a lot of folks from the food and restaurant industry, representatives from street vendors and biz. And those ran from Don Camacho at El Paseo Inn, uh, John and Roby Cleveland from Post and Beam, Susan Feinger from the Border Grill, Ashley Gardner from Cat and Fiddle Restaurant, Joseph Pizzerolzi Pizzer from uh, Worskachi, <laughs> I apologize, Rudy Espinoza from uh, Inclusive Action for the City, David Juarez from the California Restaurant Association, Andrew Thomas from the Westwood Village Improvement Association. I'm gonna stop reading, I got a lot of names there too. But you can imagine, with so many people involved, this was not a small effort. Taken collectively, these recommendations can be transformative for our city and they will help hasten our economic recovery. Um, so with that, I urge an eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Blumenfield, Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you, Madam President, and uh, thank you, Mr. Blumenfield and Mr. Price for your leadership on this very, very important package of um, what I would term as, as reform measures so that once we ease from the pandemic, we actually put ourselves in the service of our small business community, specifically restaurants. And we, we know that pre-pandemic, restaurants employed one out of every 10 Angelinos. Small businesses, I employ roughly three quarters of the workforce in the city of Los Angeles. They're the backbones of our neighborhoods, our small restaurants. And so I'm, I'm proud of the work that this council has done. And this is a major step in the right direction. Um, this is something that of course has been important to me from the time I entered public service back in the day when previously I ran restaurants and I know what it takes to, to manage one and to manage a cost of sales and understand Cal OSHA laws and um, you know work and protect my own employees. The small business community is aching for something like this during the pandemic. Uh, when I did the Open for Business initiatives back in 2015, we know that there were several policy improvements through the planning department, building and safety and others. Uh, one of them was that we made conditional use permit renewals administrative when previously they would have to go through a zoning administrator hearing just to renew a permit for a perfectly supported, no complaint uh, operated restaurant and bar, and that's helped. So I think that there is no time like the present to, to take a good long look at what we can do to help this economy rev up very quickly once that pandemic eases and comes to an end. I would also like to in involve the sometimes um, over, um, uh, I think overactive and, and somewhat draconian health department rules as it, as it relates to restaurants and getting restaurants open and, and inspected and open for business as well. So we need to really continue pushing um, the county health department to also work with uh, our restaurant industry uh, because oftentimes it's the county health department that will hold hold up a permit uh, while these restaurants are ready to open in every other area 
fully trained staff, everyone's ready to go, and they wait sometimes weeks to get a county, county health department permit. And that is oftentimes a big holdup. So uh, nonetheless, this is a, a huge step in the right direction. Our restaurants and bars uh, and uh, 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 food service establishments really need us uh, to have their backs. And so uh, I, I support you and, and uh, this is a wonderful step. And I hope that this council can take a look at, at other structural improvements to help our small business community moving forward so that we can uh, accelerate the economic recovery, which is so devastating. Thanks again, Mr. Blumenfield. This is great work. Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam President. And, and thank you so much, Mr. Blumenfield, for your leadership on this. Um, this is definitely sorely needed as we continue to reflect on how we can better reform our process to support small businesses and their operations, but particularly restaurants that have to go through quite a bit of hurdles in order to uh, just open their doors with, you know, from our process here in the city to dealing with ABC licensing at the state level and, and as Mr. O'Farrell mentioned, uh, how they have to navigate the county process as well. There is a lot of challenges that restaurants have to go through uh, particularly. And, you know, I, uh, I wanna thank all of the names that you mentioned, all the city employees from the planning department, DOT, everybody that was involved uh, because we know that our best outcomes are derived from breaking down the silos in the city. And I think, you know, while this is a very important step in terms of our business operations here and helping to facilitate greater ease in navigating our own city process, making sure that our process isn't one that is uh, that makes sense to us internally as a city, but more so to the public and how they have to navigate our process. I think our next step is to make sure that uh, we break down the silos to other levels of government so that we can facilitate greater business operations in the city. Time is money for everyone, whether it costs us on city employee time with what it takes for us to, uh, to manage a lot of these uh, applications to those that are looking to open businesses. So the sooner we can facilitate uh, an easier process for everyone and, and particularly reforming and um, you know refining our process is going to make a great deal of difference both for the city employees that have to process these applications as well as for the business owners that stand to, uh, to benefit in opening their doors much faster. So I just want to commend you for this work uh, and your team that I know uh, invested a lot of time and energy in, in uh, bringing and convening everyone to help facilitate this. Uh, but again, my, my hat's off to all the members of the different departments. I know public works, everybody that's involved in this uh, to make sure that we're refining our process and creating a better condition for our business community to navigate uh, through this when, they, when they're coming to the city for, for support. So my, my hat's off to you. Congratulations and thank you for this. Mr. Kokorian. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, thank you, Mr. Blumenfield, to you and your staff and to all of the city staff and all the departments who uh, worked so hard on this. Um, and I, I just, just historically, uh, when we were struggling through the Great Recession uh, a decade ago, and our city's budget was so devastated uh, by the loss of revenues, uh, we took extraordinary steps to recover from that. But what really drove the recovery of our budget and the resumption of so many city services that had been lost in so many ways was the economic revitalization of Los Angeles. Our economic growth coming out of the Great Recession outpaced uh, the rest of the state and the rest of the country. And that really is what benefited all Angelinos when we were able to recover those revenues and restore services. And likewise, in the catastrophic situation that we're facing now, what will drive us out of this um, is going to be over the coming years, our economic recovery. And so this, is, this agenda item is a very good first step in the many, many steps that we're going to have to take to continue to um, 
foster that economic recovery and the creation uh, of new jobs. So uh, congratulations, um, happy to, to strongly support this. The one thing I would just ask is that uh, if we could refer these recommendations as well to our Small Business Commission, uh, because the members of the Small Business Commission might very well have uh, perspectives on these recommendations uh, for additional steps that the Council might take uh, to building on these recommendations. So if I could just ask that we uh, make that referral as well. Um, proud to support this very, very important step. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gregorio. Let's go ahead and prepare to vote on this item. Item number three, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo, aye. And Cedillo, aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Council Member Harris Dawson. Koretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rahman. Aye. Ridley Thomas. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. 14 ayes. This item is adopted. Okay, let's move on to item number 14. This item was called special by Mr. De Leon. Thank you very much, um, Madam President. I want to thank uh, just very quickly the development team for working with my office to offer the covenanted uh, affordable units in this project. Uh, as we all know, it's, it's crucially important that we do more to increase production of below market housing and we can't afford to waste a single opportunity. So. Uh, with that, uh, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity, Madam President, and I just wanted to make that comment. Uh, uh, this is a project, obviously, that was uh, uh, pre-approved uh, uh, before me uh, assuming, you know, the CD14 uh, office. Uh, again, kudos to the development team, and we were uh, actually able to uh, uh, secure uh, a, a much larger number uh, than expected for affordability. So thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go ahead and prepare to vote on this item. Item 14, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo. Uh, aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Koretz. Yep. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Thank you. Rahman. Aye. Ridley Thomas. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. 14 ayes. This item is adopted. Okay, let's move on to the specials. Let's go ahead and vote on um, special one, two, and three. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson. Koretz. That's aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rahman. Aye. Ridley Thomas. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. 14 eyes, these items are adopted. Okay, Madam Clerk, what's before us now? Madam President, we have about 25 verbal motions to read into the record. 25, is that correct? Correct. Okay, go ahead and start with the first one. 
The first Rule 16 motion has been introduced to reaffirm the findings of a reward offer for the unsolved series of robberies across the city of LA beginning on January 4th, 2018. This has been introduced by Council Member Harris Dawson and seconded by Council Member Rodriguez. Next. Keep the going. next Rule 16 motion approves a street banner program coordinated by the North Hollywood West Neighborhood Council. This has been presented by Council Member Krikorian and seconded by Council Member Blumenfield. The next Rule 16 motion approves a street banner program coordinated by Bel Air Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council, presented by Council Member Koretz, seconded by Council Member Lee. The next is a Rule 16 motion to move $20,000 in the CD11 portion of the Cultural Affairs Fund to the Street Services Fund for a Black Lives Matter street paving treatment at the intersection of 7th Avenue and Westminster Avenue in Venice. This has been presented by Council Member Bonin and seconded by Council Member Harris Dawson. The next motion to be referred to the Homelessness and Poverty Committee moves that the CAO in coordination with the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority develop metrics to determine if hotels and motels will be suitable for temporary and permanent homeless housing. This has been presented by Council Members De Leon and Rodriguez and seconded by Council Member O'Farrell. The next motion to be referred to the Homelessness and Poverty Committee instructs the CLA with assistance of other departments to evaluate what other California jurisdictions have done under the authority granted to them by AB 2553 to develop a new set of design standards. This has been introduced by Council Members De Leon, Blumenfield, Price, and O'Farrell, and seconded by Council Member Koretz. The next motion to be referred to the Homelessness and Poverty Committee moves that the Housing and Community Investment Department report on the status of all Prop HHH funded projects in their current status compared to when they were originally awarded a letter of commitment. This has been presented by Council Members De Leon and Raman and seconded by Council Member Bonin. The next motion to be referred to Homelessness and Poverty Committee requests the City Attorney to report with legal options that the city has to potentially withdraw letters of commitment for Prop HHH funded projects. This has been co-presented by Council Members De Leon and Raman and seconded by Council Member Harris Dawson. The next motion to be referred to the Ad Hoc COVID Committee moves that the Housing and Community Investment Department as well as the CLA we report back with information that would be relevant to the development of a new framework to assist tenants and small landlords. This has been presented by Council Member Martinez and seconded by Council Members O'Farrell, Raman, and Bonin. The next motion to be referred to the Public Safety Committee directs the Police Department to report with an overview of the Department's plan to address the significant increase in violent crime being seen across the city. This has been presented by Council Member Koretz and seconded by Council Member Lee. The next motion to be referred to the Public Safety Committee directs the LAPD to report in closed session if necessary on security measures to control access to City Hall. This has been presented by Council Members Buscaino and Rodriguez and seconded by Council Member Martinez. The next is a resolution to be referred to the Transportation Committee. This prohibits parking of vehicles that are in excess size along sides of Farallone Avenue between Sherman Way and Wyandotte Street. This has been presented by Council Member Blumenfield and seconded by Council Member Krikorian. The next motion has been referred to the Transportation Committee. It prohibits the parking of oversized vehicles along Widener Street between Bradley Avenue and the Northern Cul-de-Sac. This has been introduced by Council Member Rodriguez and seconded by Council Member Lee. Next motion has been referred to the Information, Technology, and General Services Committee. It is to direct the General Services Department to investigate leases, license agreements, or any other types of agreements required to create a center for interagency policy and action on homelessness at 510 South Vermont Avenue 
and a constituent service center along the Crenshaw Corridor. This was presented by Councilmember Ridley Thomas and seconded by Council Members Harris Dawson and Rahman. The next motion is to be referred to the Information Technology and General Services Committee. It is to direct General Services Department to negotiate and execute a no-cost lease, license agreement, or any type of agreement that may be needed with the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority for the use of a city-owned property located at 1819 Western Avenue in order for LASA to establish an outreach coordination hub. This has been introduced by Councilmember Ridley Thomas and seconded by Councilmember Harris Dawson. The next motion is to be referred to the Energy, Climate Change, and Enver Environmental Justice Committee. It is to direct sanitation to develop voluntary service-based protocols for Care Plus operations citywide as described in the text of the motion. It has been introduced by Councilmember Bonin and Rahman, Councilmember Rahman, and seconded by Councilmembers Harris Dawson and De Leon. The next resolution is to be referred to the Rules Elections Intergovernmental Relations Committee. It is to provide support in the city's 21-22 state legislative program for legislation or administrative action that would provide one-time funding of $2 billion in the state budget for direct assi assistance to local governments to help replace COVID-19 related revenue shortfalls. This has been introduced by Councilmember Blumenfield and seconded by Councilmember De Leon. The next resolution is to be referred to the Rules, Elections, and Intergovernmental Relations Committee. It is to provide support in the city's 21-22 federal legislative program for any administrative or legislative action by the United States government to oppose the agricultural laws passed by the government of India in September 2020, which exploit agrarian communities in India. This has been introduced by Councilmember Rodriguez and seconded by Councilmember Rahman. The next resolution is to be in referred to the Rules, Elections, and inter excuse me, Intergovernmental Relations Committee. It is to provide support in the 21-22 State Legislative Program for Assembly Bill 15-2 to extend state-mandated tenant eviction protections during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. This has been introduced by Councilmember Koretz and seconded by Councilmember Rahman. Next is a commendatory resolution to de declare January 13, 2021, Korean American Day. This has been introduced by Council Member Lee and seconded by Council Member Rodriguez. Next is a resolution commending Dr. Laura Gian for her exceptional service to the residents of Los Angeles. This has been introduced by Council Member Ridley Thomas and seconded by Council Member Lee. Next is a resolution to be referred to the Rules Inter Elections Intergovernmental Relations Committee. It is to provide support in the st city's 21-22 state legislative program to establish for Assembly Bill 16 to establish state financial assistance programs for renters, small landlords, and affordable housing providers during the COVID-19 pandemic. This was introduced by Council Member Koretz and seconded by Council Member Rahman. Next is a resolution commending James Ahn for his exceptional service to the residents of Los Angeles. This was introduced by Councilmember Ridley Thomas and seconded by Councilmember Lee. Next is a resolution congratulating Captain 3 Greg McManus for his 24 years of loyal and dedicated service to the Los Angeles Police Department. This was introduced by Councilmember Buscaino and seconded by Councilmember Lee. Finally, a resolution congratulating regarding her for its advocacy on behalf of female restaurateurs. This was introduced by Councilmember Rodriguez and seconded by Councilmember Rahman. Uh, Madam President, Council has motions for posting and referral. Third. Members, are there any announcements before we get to our, our journey motion this, this afternoon? I'm sorry, this morning? Any announcements, members? Okay, we're going to go ahead and um, bring in um, Mr. Labonja's family who wants to be part of um, this morning's adjournment. Um, also friends and former colleagues and former staff members. So can you just please give us a minute? Thank you.
Okay, members, thank you. If I can please ask you to all rise. Just please adjust your cameras. <clears throat> <clears throat> Colleagues, <clears throat> it is with heaviest of hearts that we adjourn today's meeting in honor of one of Los Angeles' greatest citizens, local representatives, and friend, the great Tom LaBonge, always so full of life, love, energy for the city of Los Angeles has passed. As a council member, he was dedicated to the good people of Council District 4 and to all Angelinos throughout the city of Los Angeles. With an impressive city, call, city hall career, Tom began his service as a member of Tom Bradley's Youth Council in 1974. From there, Tom's passion for Los Angeles grew even greater as he served the offices of Councilwoman Peggy Stevenson Councilmember John Ferraro, Mayor Richard Reardon, and the Department of Water and Power. He was a native Angelino. He was born in Silver Lake in 1953. He graduated from John Marshall High School in Cal State LA and went on to represent the community that he grew up in in 2001 as a council member. He, was always, he always held the belief that no public servant was above getting their hands dirty to deliver crucial services to our constituents. And this remained the case even when he took office as a council member. Countless people recall stories of council member LaBonge pulling over in his Crown Vic to clear out flooded streets and pick up trash to make our city shine a little brighter throughout his 15 year career in public office. I recall when I first got elected in 2013, Tom was my seatmate, he sat to, my, to the right of me. And I remember at times, you know, Tom used to be, used to love to chime in during public comment or when he felt the need to want to say something. And I often held his hand and Herb would always say, gosh, Martinez, you got to help Tom today. And we would often just, often just lean on each other for support. And Tom was one of those rare people that always checked in to make sure that everyone was okay. I took care of him and he took care of me. He would often text to make sure how I was doing. He would often remember my birthday, special events that were happening in my life. He would often visit my district office to check in on my staff. He would drive around in my district, which would drive me nuts, because I would say, what are you doing in Van Nuys, Tom? And he had a list of things for me to get done, and I used to love that. And some people would say, doesn't that drive you crazy? I said, no, if anything, Tom wants me to do better, and he wants all of us to do better. The last time I talked to Tom was right before Christmas. He um, often dropped off pumpkin bread for me, my family, and my staff. And the last time he dropped off pumpkin bread to my office was on December 22nd. And I remember I called him to say thank you and wish him a, a Merry Christmas, and I was so mad at him because he was driving around delivering pumpkin bread in the middle of a pandemic. And I said, Tom, you need to really go home. Please wear a mask and be safe because I'm worried about you. And he said, I'll be okay. I just wanted to make sure that I wished you a Merry Christmas. I'm sorry we didn't get to see each other. And that was Tom for me. Tom was more than a colleague. He was a friend, a friend who took care of me, a friend who always reminded me that families Family came first and constituents came first as well, and he did everything he could to instill that in so many of us. He was a man of the people, constantly engaging Angelinos to share his trivial style knowledge of the history of our great city, which he loved so dearly. And as I've said before, he knew every single high school mascot in the city of Los Angeles because he wanted people to talk about their lives, their hopes, their dreams here in the city of Los Angeles. A 39-year veteran of City Hall, you wouldn't know that he left the city just because you would continue to see him. You would see him in his, in his frequent trips to City Hall, often sharing his passion and his loaves of pumpkin bread to all of us, even up to his very, this very last holiday season. 
It's hard to overstate the incredible impact that he had in our city. From expanding our city sister program to public access to the beautiful Griffith Park, to personally donating photographs to support the Los Angeles Public Library's photo collection, not to mention his unwavering support for Measure L to ensure that all children could enjoy the beauty, magic, and possibilities of a great book discovered in one of our great libraries. And that was the essence of Tom LaBonge. He wanted everyone to have a shot at a great life. As you've heard from countless others, Tom was and will always be remembered as Mr. Los Angeles. He is forever an angel in the city of Angel. And the bright light that he has brought to Los Angeles will never, ever fade. We send his family all of our deepest condolences. We want to thank you all for sharing Tom with us for so many years. May he rest in peace. Now I would like to ask Mr. O'Farrell to please continue with the rest of his, our tribute to Tom. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I, uh, I join thousands of Angelinos uh, who have had a heavy heart since Friday evening. Uh, and that heaviness continues with all of us. Um, when Tom laid his head on his living room couch and went to sleep, he woke up with the angels and left sadness in his wake. But aren't we lucky that Tom lives on in thousands of us, not just in Los Angeles, but across the state, across the United States, across the world. That's the breadth of his reach. And everything that you just said about how much he cared, about how much he knew about Angelinos and about our city and our incredible institutions, our departments, our city family, he loved so deeply. And that love was manifest in the way he conducted his life. He gave everything to everyone else and I'm so grateful to his family, to Bridget and Charles and Mary Kate for sharing him with us. Um, Bridget, you were on a 41 year plus journey with Tom. You knew him better than everyone, anyone else. You also knew how much he loved the world around him and his family and Angelinos and the city family. Um, but you also knew what made him tick. Um, you and I just yesterday talked about, about Tom um, and how as an Irishman, and that's, that's one, one fundamental way I could really relate to Tom LaBonge is, is as an Irishman, he was always in on the joke. Um, he delighted in self-deprecation and put himself out there so that people could laugh and experience joy at his expense. But what people didn't realize is that he was also, always, they didn't always realize it, is that he was also in on the joke because he just wanted to have fun as well. And there's no greater gift than spreading love and joy. And that's what Tom's life was all about. Let me just briefly say that I first met Tom LaBonge in 1993 on a beautiful warm spring day in Glassell Park uh, and I was in my backyard mowing the lawn and he walked up 34 steps from Division Street in Glassell Park all up and down the hill. So dozens and dozens and dozens of homes that had at least 34 steps. He walked up and down all those steps on Division Street just to get votes for his first race for city council for the 13th district back in 1993. And I heard the gate rattle. I looked over and it was Tom LaBonge leaning forward waving. And I knew instantly who it was. So that's how I met Tom LaBonge. He wanted my vote and man, did he earn it. Um, and so I followed his career at that time. There was, I had no interest, not much knowledge about the inner workings of the city just that I was a neighborhood activist and I cared deeply about my community. So many years later, I joined the city in 2002. And then uh, when I went to work for Eric Garcetti back then, 
uh, and 10 years after that, I decided to run for the seat. Tom was the very first person. I didn't have to ask for his support. He put me in his car in his Crown Victoria when I was walking back to get coffee one day over at Hollywood and Western, put me in, in his car and said, you need to run for this seat. You know the district, people love you, people respond to you, and you have a heart, uh, a head, and the hands to get the job done, Mitch, run for this seat. So he was the first person who actually encouraged me to run for public office. I will never, ever forget that, Tom. Um, and I also want to say that he dominated those Hollywood Walk of Fame star ceremonies. And I didn't care. I loved it because he added a certain delight to the proceedings that I hope that I can uh, continue. And I, and I hope that I do his energy justice with all that he brought to those star ceremonies. And uh, back in 2015, we dedicated Tom LeBond Square at Tracy Street over in front of Marshall High School, his alma mater. So I encourage everyone to go visit Tom LeBond Square. It's a really wonderful place. And now it's a somewhat hallowed place. If you want to just take up his energy and, and feel the love of Tom LeBonge, please visit that square. And lastly, I'll say this. Everyone has a Tom story. I have so many, but I, I've chosen this one. Back in, in the summer, uh, uh, or it was the, the, the late summer of uh, 2014, early fall, it was Hollywood High School's homecoming football game. So Tom LeBonge and I were there because we were also going to dedicate the brand new synthetic field at the same time. So the bleachers were packed with faculty, parents, high school uh, students, and it was just before kickoff and just before the game, and there was a ceremony to celebrate the new AstroTurf. Now, Tom was a football player. So I'm sitting there and I'm nursing three slipped discs and I can barely turn my neck. I didn't let anyone, I was just kind of sitting there quietly. I made my remarks, I sat down. Tom brings a football up and says, come on, Mitch, make the catch. And I looked at him like, and I pointed at my neck and he didn't understand what was happening. So I got up, I went to the 50 yard line where Tom was standing with the crowd watching. He had me run to the end zone and threw a pass. By then it was about a 30 yard pass. It wasn't 50 plus yards, it was a 30 yard pass and I knew that my survivability depended on catching that pass in the end zone, and I did. It was a miracle because I could barely move my arms, but I did it, Tom threw the winning pass. That's what Tom always did. He threw the winning pass. And Tom and Bridget and Mary Kate and Charles, he will continue throwing that winning pass for all ages, for all of us, God love him. He lives in our spirits eternally. Uh, and the angels are exalting with joy because now that's where Tom is. And he's watching on all of us. And let that be an inspiration for all of us to continue uh, with the heart and soul of public service that he so beautifully exemplified. May he rest in peace, colleagues. Thank you. And thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. Councilwoman Roman. Um, these remarks have been so moving. Uh, I didn't have a chance to get to know um, uh, Tom LeBonge the way that everyone did, but I knew him in the way that most Angelinos did, which is that he was my representative and I loved him. And every single person on my street had a story about how Tom had helped them individually their power was off and he called the DWP and got it back on. The street light was broken and he himself came over and fixed it. For each person, he didn't just fix their problems, he fixed their problems himself. And it was incredible to see the kind of love that he inspired in the neighborhood that I, that I live in and that I now represent. Since I got elected, he has been stopping by. Um, and it was so meaningful to me uh, he stopped by more than once. He dropped off every local paper that mentioned the race with a note that said, local papers are awesome. You should subscribe to them all. He dropped off pumpkin bread. And every week when he came, he would pull up my garbage bins. 
And when I heard him pulling up the bins, I would run out and we would talk at a distance mast. And he would tell me his advice about the city and what the city meant to him and what the job meant to him. He gave me two pieces of advice that I take to heart. One was that he told me, drive the district and make sure your team drives the district every day. You gotta go out there, you gotta see what's happening. You gotta understand the city's problems. It's a big district, drive it all the time. And he said, after COVID got, you know, the numbers got better, he wanted to drive the district with me and to show me the way he understood how, to, how the problems of the district were. He wanted to teach me what he knew. And I was so excited to do that. The other thing that he told me, um, which meant so much to me, was that on the last time that I spoke to him, which was uh, last Thursday, the, a week before he passed, he said, you know, you gotta be easy on yourself. You know, don't work too hard, figure out what you wanna do and really focus on it and get it done. But you can't be too hard on yourself because the job is overwhelming. And I think what he wanted was for me to find as much joy in this job as he had, because it was such an incredible joy for him. I just also just knowing him in the brief time since he got elected, uh, since I got elected and him calling me and coming to visit with me uh, and in knowing him as a, as a constituent um, and as someone who has watched Los Angeles city politics for so many years, I have to tell you his family how unusual it was that everyone associates him with the word love. You don't hear that word a lot in LA. And he brought that. And I hope that I can serve um, with that word in the center of our work and in the center of the district's work. And in doing so, I hope to honor that legacy of love that he brought to the office, that he brought to his interactions with every single person in the district. Um, and I just want to thank all of you for sharing him with us. Um, and, and for giving that love to us. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Madam President. Um, it's Bridget, um, I see you, um, Mary Kate and Charles, we love you. Sending our, our deepest condolences. Bridget, it was great to connect with you yesterday and share some Tom stories with you over the phone. Um, Tom was, uh, a mentor, a dear friend to all of us. Uh, and I, I appreciate um, having this opportunity uh, to, to recognize his service to our, to our city. As much as Tom loved the entire city, Tom had a profound love for my district, uh, advocating for the preservation of the Watts Towers, recognized also the critical role the port plays in international trade and relationships loved and spent so much time at the Korean Bell. It seemed like he was the adopted son of the Republic of Korea. In fact, Tom was spotted in San Pedro, as I shared with Bridget yesterday, on Christmas Eve day. And um, a couple of San Pedrans recognized him, just, you know, say, hey, Tom, welcome to San Pedro. And by the way, there's a rainbow behind you. And Tom goes, quick, take a photo of me behind the, in front of the rainbow, uh, overlooking the port. I. Um, Love and respect to the fact that during his years as a council member, he would call members um, asking for permission to enter their respective council districts. And I once told him, Tom, there's no need to call. We are all one city. But on a summer day years ago, he called me asking for permission to, to come into San Pedro. And I said, only if you swing by my parents' backyard, we're all here having dinner. And sure enough, Tom came by, we broke bread together and feasted on an Italian meal. But one of my favorite moments of Tom uh, in the council chambers was when we voted uh, in support of bringing back uh, the NFL, NFL to LA. And after he spoke in support, and, and this is something Mr. O'Farrell, I can relate to, he had a football in hand. So after he spoke in support, he threw that football pass to me across the horseshoe and it was a perfect strike. I wasn't expecting it, uh, caught it, uh, but it showed his, his excitement and love for our city that was infectious. Uh, he valued relationships, was a mentor of mine and reminded me um, every time he called me to be sure to let those close to you know that you love them. 
He always said, make sure you, you check in on your parents every day. He epitomized the true meaning of public service. He took um, a literal hands-on approach of solving quality of life problems in his district. He led with urgency, he led with such grace Like many of you colleagues, I'll miss his notes that he would leave on our desks that would be attached with a 1952 newspaper article about our districts. We'll miss his pumpkin bread deliveries. Tom, thank you so much for your service, for your friendship, your mentorship. I love you, I will miss you. Bridget, Mary, Kate, and Charles, thank you so much for sharing your husband and father with us. I last spoke to him when he shared with me about his brother Steve's passing. I told him, Tom, the next meeting will adjourn in memory of Stephen. So I truly believe today that he's been reunited with his brothers, Stephen, Brian, Dennis, Mark, Timothy, Robert, his parents, his loved ones, and friends. We also know members that our beloved Tommy Lasorda passed on the same night. Now, can you imagine how loud it must be today in blue heaven at this moment. So rest in peace, my brother. I love you, Tom. May your memory be a blessing and may perpetual light shine upon you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buscaino. Mr. Koretz. I first met Tom when we were both on the mayor's Youth Advisory Council back in the 70s. And I can only think of him as the ultimate mensch, which in Yiddish means a good man. Um, someone who spent so much time doing individual good deeds for people. Um, he was the city's goodwill ambassador and sort of the city's uh, informal historian uh, we all know him as a ball of energy and a super nice guy, um, but not everybody knows that he would often give walking tours of City Hall and its historic elements to random people that he would run into in City Hall, and he would meet them and take them up to the Tom Bradley Tower. Um, as everyone has said, he was a role model for providing great constituent service because he would often hop out and do it himself. Um, and he loved everything about Los Angeles from uh, Griffith Park where he hiked every morning um, to uh, the campy and historic restaurants of the city like Musso and Frank and Pink's. And of course, when uh, we declared Pink's Square, um, we knew he would be there because Pink's always had a, a second council member. Um, even at, it's just so hard to believe that, uh, that Tom isn't with us. I think we took for granted the fact that uh, we would have this young, wonderful human being um, doing all the good deeds and the wonderful things that, that he did um, indefinitely. Uh, he, he recognized uh, every human being Equally, he was uh, exuberantly loving of all people, and he had a knack for making people feel appreciated. Um, my staff and I have done quite a bit of calling back and forth and recalling various times when Tom made each of them and each of us special and feel special and appreciated. Um, uh, one thing that, uh, I'll always remember uh, Tom uh, could give a speech at a drop of a hat. Uh, that was never my ability. And the first gala that I went to for a nonprofit, um, Tom was a featured speaker and I was just someone in the audience and uh, not on the agenda uh, with hundreds of people there out of nowhere. He says, and I see Paul Koretz in the audience. Paul, could you come up and speak? And I was at a nonprofit that I honestly was not that familiar with. So Tom, of course, could do that 
even if he knew nothing about it, but uh, uh, that was a struggle for me. Um, and, and I'll never forget that. Um, I, I, uh, I agree with the thought that uh, Tom, uh, I'm sure is reunited with, uh, with Tommy Lasorda, uh, two men who both were LA's great goodwill ambassadors and both who had LA in their names. Um, when I invited uh, Tommy Lasorda for his 90th birthday into council, uh, I knew that uh, Tom Levant would be there. And uh, I have a photograph with both of them at the lectern uh, that I will always treasure. Um, Tom will be sorely missed. And uh, I think it'll take a long time for all of us to uh, to get over this, this tragic loss. Um, I, I wish my best to the family as, as we all do and as the city does, and may he rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Kurtz. Mr. Lee? I'm not gonna sh say anything right now that hasn't been already partially shared in someone else's story. Um, I know that uh, Councilmember LeBonge is looking down on me right now and asking me where my tie is and scolding me for it right now. Um, I, you know, he was Mr. Los Angeles to so many of us. Uh, I've had the privilege of knowing uh, Councilmember LeBonge for close to 25 years when I worked in Councilman Wax's office and he uh, worked in the mayor's office, Mayor Reardon's office. And years before I even thought about running, Tom came up to me one day and he said, John, he goes, um, you're going to, you're going to run for office someday. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm endorsing you now. So forever remember that I am your first endorsement. And I, and I, and I said, I was like, I was like, well, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I really appreciate that Tom, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, in the position that I'm at, he goes, no, no, you're going, you're going to be, you're going to be there someday. And remember, you need to drive around your district. You need to talk to the people of your district. You need to meet people. You need to be out there. Don't be stuck in this building. Get out there and talk to the people of your district. Find out what they want. Find out, you know, what their, you know, concerns are. Um, you know, be a part of that community. Uh, he was someone that as a staffer, so many of us loved because he treated us all with such incredible respect. He learned our names. He stopped to give us advice. He truly, you know, told us each of us and like how important our positions were. And he made us feel like we were the most important person in the city. Um, Tom, um, Tom was not only good to, you know, us as staffers, but even my mom about, I want to say three or four months ago was in city hall. No, actually I take that back. This is, this is pre COVID. Um, and she was in the garage and Tom bumped into her and he said, Mrs. Lee, Mrs. Lee. And he handed her a pumpkin bread <laughs> and she, she's like, she could always never could believe the how he would always remember who she was. And it's because he did care so much about everyone in the city. Uh, I, I loved the council member. He is someone that I've always looked up to, someone I tried to, to be more like, because I know that every waking moment as a council member, his only, you know, his thoughts were, of what could I do today to make this city better? And so to his family, like everyone here has said, thank you so much for sharing him with us. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm so happy that he got to see me uh, get elected to this position because I truly loved him and he forever will be my mentor, my friend. And even though I didn't live in his district, my council member. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Mr. Bonin. 
Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, and, and let me start by saying uh, thank you to, to Bridget and to, to Charles and, and to Mary Kate. Uh, thank you for sharing Tom with us and with Los Angeles for, for all these years. Uh, Tom was, I guess I first met Tom in the 90s when he was working at DWP uh, during the Reardon administration. And then I came to know him as a staff member uh, for his friend, Billy. I don't think he ever called Bill Rosendahl Bill. It was always Billy. Uh, and then, of course, uh, serving together, particularly on the Transportation Committee. And Tom al always struck me as a, a man with a giant heart who really cared about the little things. You know, we hear the stories again and again of him stopping and picking up trash or him remembering somebody's mother's name. Those little things are the kind of things that Tom paid attention to all the time. Uh, I remember being chastised more than once, and I remember witnessing him chastise employees of LAX uh, many times if they dared to commit the transgression of saying Tibbet, the abbreviation for Tom Bradley International Terminal because it was vitally important for him that Tom Bradley be remembered and that that honor always be mentioned. And if you said Tibbet, you were in trouble and you were gonna hear about it. Um, Tom was you know, uh, uh, always, as everybody said, out in everybody's districts. One Saturday morning, I was at the, the VA uh, in, in my district and uh, I had gone to the event and I didn't bring a, a staffer with me. I didn't want him to have to work on the weekend. So I went and it was a birthday celebration for a vet who was living there, who was turning 100 years old. And Tom was there ahead of me. Uh, he was there orchestrating and organizing the whole thing. Uh, when he realized I didn't have staff with me, he suddenly shifted. This is when he was still in office and became my staff member organizing which photos I would be in, who I would be with, uh, composing all the shots, uh, and, and constantly introducing me around. Uh, Tom was a master, I thought, uh, always of uh, the, the courtesy uh, and the hello and the thank you to anybody he met. I, I, there were a few times I drove around with him, and uh, no matter how much of a hurry we were in to where we were going, if he saw a DOT employee directing traffic, he stopped and he got out of the car and he thanked them for their service. If we were passing a fire, we weren't passing a fire station. If we were driving down the street and there was a fire station, we were going in and, and we were saying hello and we were thanking people. Uh, he was always, always looking for those little things and, and for the great courtesy. And uh, Tom, was a, Tom was also a wild ride. I mean, you never knew where you were going. Uh, and you just knew it was going to be interesting. And it was going to be fun. And it was going to be unexpected. And, and, and that goes for being on a committee with Tom, not knowing what he was going to say when he started talking or where he was going to go, or physically going somewhere with him. When, as I told some of my colleagues over the weekend, we got the, the news. One of my defining memories of Tom is one day council ended when I was Bill Rosendahl's chief of staff uh, a little early. And he's like, he said to, to Bill, Billy, let's go to lunch. Michael, come with me. Bill was always Billy. Mike was always Michael. Uh, and we got in his car and we went to some tiny little taco joint uh, south of, of, of downtown. And then afterwards, he decided he wanted to, to, to give us a tour of Los Angeles as only Tom can. And so I don't know how he found it. I could never find it. If you give me a million bucks, I couldn't find it now. But he found a giant opening somewhere downtown to a storm drain. And we drove into the storm drain. And we went pretty deep. And the storm drain kept funneling. It was getting narrower and narrower and narrower. And I thought, oh, my God, we're going to get stuck in here. And I'm going to be trying to push this thing out of here. Um, he went in as far as we could until the walls were this close to us. And then he backed us out masterfully. And it was just an example for me of the, the, the kind of thing with Tom is you never knew where you were gonna go, uh, but it was gonna be an adventure. So um, uh, uh, thank you again uh, to Bridget and Charles and Mary-Kate for uh, sharing uh, with us. If any of you uh, need uh, a collection of memorabilia of anything in the city, any of us have it, because I know that when Tom was leaving, Bridget wouldn't let him take all that stuff from his office home. 
So every day, anything vaguely related to Venice or LAX or the Santa Monica Mountains or, or, or any council member who overlapped with a council member I worked with, there'd be, there'd be something coming by the office with a little post-it note uh, or, or a little lecture. I imagine Avac in the CLA's office has a huge collection of stuff uh, that, that Tom gave them. There's enough between us all uh, for a, a Tom LaBonge uh, museum. We are all, you know, in these jobs, we, we, we fade from public memory very fast, council members do. Uh, two years later, nobody remembers who you are. Uh, we're like comets. Tom, not the case. Tom uh, remembered years after he's out of office and will be remembered years from now. Uh, the average council member is like a comet passing in the sky. Tom is a, a star uh, firmly planted in, in the heavens of Los Angeles forever. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonin. Mr. Kokorian. Thank you, Madam President, and uh, thank you, Mr. Bonin, for your closing comments. You're certainly right, and I think there's a, a good reason that Tom will always be remembered long after he left office, and that's because so many people remember him independently of his service in office. So many people in the city remember Tom as their friend. Um, Many, many years ago, uh, Will Rogers used to say, I never met a man I didn't like. And that I think was, was Tom as well. Um, I can't count how many times I saw him interacting with uh, a CEO of a company in, in exactly the way he would interact with uh, a city employee or uh, you know, one of his constituents. Um, everybody was treated with warmth and love and respect and, and equitably, because they were all his friends. Um, I first met Tom in that same, same campaign that Mitch was describing in 1993. Um, and I was on the other side. I was trying to help Jackie Goldberg get elected. And I, I really got to know what Tom was about during that campaign because no one in his district had a negative, had in that district, had a negative word to say about him. Um, it was, we were walking precincts and we're always hearing, well, who's she running against? Tom LaBonge. Oh, Tom, you know, 10 years ago, I had this problem, you know, my trash wasn't getting picked up and Tom took care of it. Because even as a staff person, a long time staff person, Tom took care of people and made people love him and made him, uh, made them appreciate uh, how much um, government can can help if if people just care about serving as as Tom did, and you know we everybody talks about the pumpkin bread and knowing all the high schools and um, and his taking pictures of everything and sending them to people, and you know to to the uninitiated that might just seem like Tom Labonge shtick, but it wasn't. Every one of those gestures. Every time he did that, it was a way he was sharing love with people. He was telling people that he respected and appreciated them, and he was going to share that little thing with them. And I, you know, I, I think I'm really only coming to. I'm only coming to fully appreciate, I think, how much Tom meant in retrospect and seeing all those moments and all those expressions of love. Sorry. But that was Tom. He loved everybody and it was reciprocated because he loved everybody and he did so much to help so many people. They loved him, and uh, you know it's no accident that his motto was "Love and Enjoy Los Angeles." And um, you know the, the another thing that everybody always would point out about Tom, and I think mi they misunderstood that too, is Tom never met a camera that he didn't love. 
And, you know, he made it a point to meet all of the, uh, the TV news stations, uh, not the reporters, but the camera people. And he taught me early on, yeah, you got to know the guys with the cameras because they're the ones that are going to get you in the shot or not get you in the shot. And for most people, for most people in public life, you know, that was a means to, that sort of act is the means to an end. It's something to promote their own personal ambitions. And um, Tom didn't li limit that just to Los Angeles. I remember once we, when we declared, we were in a committee together working on declaring little Bangladesh. And when it was over, all the Bangladeshi press was in the committee room. And Tom says, come on, come on, Paul, get, you got to get in this picture. Tomorrow, 160 million Bangladeshis are going to see you. And so, and so for some, that would be something about, you know, ambition, but it wasn't. And again, this is something I realized only later that, that for Tom, that was a way that he could help people to understand what government can do. It, it was a way to understand that government does good things. And this was a way to convey that to the public. It wasn't really about him. It was about Los Angeles city government doing good things and his wanting to celebrate that and, and let people know about that. Um, his, his, his knowledge of Los Angeles history was of course encyclopedic and legendary. Uh, and to Mike's point about the Tom LaBonge Museum, man, do I look forward to visiting that museum. Uh, we, we went to breakfast one time, I remember, and he was regaling me with some story about something that had happened in the 90s or something. And he said, here, wait a minute, Let, let's go over to my office, I'll show you. And we were right across the street from his Tulip Lake office. And we went in there and we wound through all the, con the rooms and we finally got to this, his conference room, which was stacked floor to ceiling with cardboard boxes. I kid you not, there, were no room, there was no room for seats in this conference room because it was so filled with boxes. And he goes to the fourth row, the third box down, he pulls it out, he pulls out a file folder out of that box and says, see, look, look here. So he, he had memory, he knew every single thing, every single file, every single uh, memento, every single photograph where he could find it. And now I understand why Bridget wouldn't let him bring anything more home because it was insane. But he knew about Los Angeles because he cared so deeply about Los Angeles and he kept this stuff because he knew that what he was doing was part of history and he was helping to shape history and make history and it was important. Um, he wasn't much of a stickler for, for process or even really for policy. I mean, all of us who served for a while with him will remember that there wasn't a council meeting that didn't go by without that clarion call, Avoc, I need a motion. And, you know, it didn't matter whether it was according to our rules or anything else, it, it would just happen. And somehow Tom would make it happen. And again, the reason was because he knew that the work is not about anything else other than getting things done for people. Uh, every time council would end, by the time I got down to the garage, Tom's already in his car on the way out. And, uh, and he always told me, you know, you got to touch the people. You got to touch the people. The job's not about the meetings. It's about touching the people. And uh, as other members have mentioned, he'd ask always, have you called your mother? You know, have you called your family? He brought out the best in all of us, not just in our work, but as people and made us better people and more loving and warmer people. And, and Bridget, I, I feel like you and your whole family are part of our family. I feel like, you know, because of, you know, Tom sharing you with us for so many years and us knowing about your meeting at the Palomino Club, listening to Hoyt Axton and, and, and you know, you have become a part of our family. Um, and, and I just want you all to know how much it meant for all of us and for our city to, that you were willing to share so much of Tom LaBonge with, with each of us and with the city. When Tom was getting ready to retire, he used to say, you know, John Ferraro never had a fourth quarter and you gotta have a fourth quarter. And, you know, what he meant by that was after we're done here, you know, we need to 
have other things to do and enjoy our families and our, our life as well as our public service. And Tom's fourth quarter wasn't long enough, but there was not a man that I've ever met that squeezed more joy and more life and more energy and more productivity out of every single moment of his life than Tom LaVange. It was a joy to watch him and to see how much he got out of every second of his life. And every time anything bad happened, as my seatmate, you know, we would sit and talk about the adjournments and memory and the reward motions and how tragic things were. And, and his, his line was always, you know, Paul, every day's a blessing. Never forget, every day's a blessing. And Tom's life was filled with blessings and he was a blessing to all of us and to this city and, and we'll never forget him. Rest in peace, my friend. Thank you, Mr. Kerkorian. Councilwoman Rodriguez. Uh, Bridget and uh, Mary Kate and Charles, it, you know, my first introduction to Tom was when I was a young staffer in the Reardon administration. And I remember meeting you, Mary Kate, for the first time being carried on his shoulders at an all staff meeting. And I remember how immensely pride, proud he was of bringing you everywhere <laughs> because you were everywhere with him. But you all were very much part of this story. Every inch of this story is intertwined with you all. And I want to first thank you for sharing him with us. I am forever grateful to have had his example as a colleague and as a mentor, as someone who loved this city and wanted to be better for it. He exemplified everything that public service is about. And he genuinely brought his whole heart into everything that he did. And I'm forever grateful for having had the opportunity of knowing him and calling him my friend. Um, <clears throat> you know, I thought I was all dried up, but I spent all weekend searching for videos and interviews. Yeah, my hand up on this. Uh, searching for interviews and hearing his voice over and over again. Yeah telling the stories that really captured so much of who he was. Uh, you know, there was, there are those who thought that the fire department was his absolute favorite. But if you look at the tribute from every city department in this city, they too thought they were the favorite. Uh, when I was on the board of public works, I remember making a visit over to Sig Plaza over at the Bureau of Engineering to get some maps and their run, Tom runs in, as he always did, to go see Randy Price. Randy, Randy, where's my map? Where's my map? I came for my map. And, you know, there wasn't a city employee that didn't know him and didn't feel that he thought they were the most important person in the city. And that is the truth, because they were. He valued and appreciated everyone's service, every city employee's service, and what they contributed to making our city better. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I, I just wanted to say to you all how much I love and appreciate you for sharing him with us as many years as we had. Um, there were not enough. And, you know, I think about uh, just all of, uh, you know, every part of this city, he knew like the back of his hand. And there were times that I referenced him, uh, and in fact, I was having a conversation with, uh, with Mr. De Leon recently about knowing the streets of Los Angeles. I said, I pride myself in knowing, I'm trying to learn the streets as well as Tom LaBonge did, knowing it like a Thomas guy. And he was someone who knew every nook and cranny of the city because he personally visited it and recognized its value and contribution to the city. Every neighborhood matters. And so uh, I'm gonna miss these unannounced visits to City Hall, 
that he would make and giving me those wonderful three cheek kiss uh, that, uh, that we all were so blessed to have, telling me as he was passing and saying hi to everyone and glad handing that, uh, Monica, Monica, I'm reading your newsletters. I'm reading them all the time. They're fantastic. Keep it up. Keep doing the work for the people of Los Angeles. And all of those things were just the affirmations that I needed to know that I was doing right, that I was doing what I was taught by someone who loved this city as much as he did. And, you know, we, we work in a place of great privilege to be able to serve the people in the way that we have an opportunity to do every single day. And I think about all the years that I had the benefit of knowing him. And I only wish we all had more because there's a lot of public servants to stand to learn the lessons of Tom LaBanche. And I just want to say to you all how much I love you, Bridgie, how much I know he struggled when you were sick, but so strong and how proud he was of your strength in overcoming your battle with cancer. You know, many of my colleagues from the Reardon administration convened on a Zoom on over the weekend to share the stories of Tom, which of course were limitless. I think we all have one. I think some of the favorites that uh, we can all talk about is, you know, of course the, uh, you know, as everyone's mentioned, the pumpkin bread and, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, one of my favorites was uh, taking one of the newer staff members. They were taking it on a, on a drive to to lunch. Uh, Joe Gunn, and Joe Gunn uh, took out a stick of gum and popped it in his mouth and was a little careless in where he was disposing of that wrapper, and he got chastised for it, and lunch was over in that moment after he first made him go pick up that trash. He understood that we all had the personal responsibility to do better, to be better, and to keep our city better, and I... Uh, I just, uh, I love and I miss him already. And I'm gonna continue to play his voice in my head with everything that I do in this job. Because I remember that very first event that we had when I was running for office that he came to. And uh, Stacy sent me the picture from that moment when he comes over to me and puts his arm on me and starts talking to me about how I need to run and how I, the, the way I need to approach the work. What he never knew was that all of those approaches were derived from his lesson. And I will forever be grateful for him and for having been blessed to know him and the city is forever indebted to his service because he cared enough about all of us to want to make it better. He approached this work like the young, optimistic, passionate person that he was when he joined that youth council so many years ago. And I, I always like to tell my staff about how, just like he did, I think it's important for us to approach our jobs like those field staffers that are always out in the community seeing what we can do to make it better because these roles are a privilege and it's just a moment in time. But he was the one that taught so many lessons to so many of us in valuing and understanding that. And it's for that reason that he's going to forever be remembered by so many in such a beloved way. You know, they, uh, Maya Angelou has this quote that famously talks about, you know, people won't remember what, they, what you said, but they'll remember forever how you made them feel. And Tom made everyone feel loved because he did love everybody. And every ounce of his being exuded and exemplified that. And so I just want to say to you all, I love you very much. Thank you for sharing him with us. 
and God bless him, and may he rest in peace. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Mr. Blumenfield. Thank you. I uh, just want to uh, join in, in the chorus here. I mean, I, I didn't know Tom uh, until I got elected uh, back in 2013, but man, am I grateful for the years I got to, the two years I got to serve with him in this council and the years of friendship since then. Uh, he has just, uh, as everyone here has mentioned, is, is an amazing person who loved this city uh, and has just done so much uh, that I, I'm in incredibly grateful. You know, you talked about him being hands-on. Uh, he was in so many ways and, and uh, I enjoyed stealing some of his ideas and with his permission, of course, uh, I love that he had a, a special truck where he would go around picking up shopping carts and those kinds of things. And uh, I talked to him about that. He told me about it. I'm like, I got to get that, do that in my district. And he's like, yeah, that's what it's about. You got to be out there. Uh, it's the same, you know, we're, we're hearing this consistent theme. It's, it's really amazing. Uh, I remember also, you know, we, some people talk about the wild ride of, of Tom LaVange. You never knew what to expect in, in committee. We were having a discussion about the long wait times at DWP for the phone calls. And everyone was talking about it. all of a sudden he just gets up, goes to the phone on the side of the wall and dials DWP. It's like, I'm going to see exactly what this is about. He's, mind you, he's doing this in a meeting full of people uh, and a whole discussion. And he's on and everything stops and he's on. He's like, okay, I'm waiting. He's, he's timing it and everything. Uh, I mean, that's just what, how he was. He didn't, uh, if he had the impulse to do it and it was good for, for the city and good for policy, he would just stand up and do it. Uh, and that, that is, that is Tom. Uh, I'm so grateful. And I, I, I Bridget, Mary Kate, Charles, thank you again, like everyone said, for sharing him with us. Uh, it really is, is a treasure. And, and he was a mentor to so many people, uh, myself included, yeah, you know, throughout this city. But he also, he trained many people in the city and, and staff members who worked for him, uh, all of whom we know now who are part of the LaBange legacy, Carolyn Ramsey, Renee Weitzer, Stacey Marble, Debbie Kim, Jeannie Mim, all these folks we know here in the city, they're all, like all of us, are products of, of, of Tom's legacy. Uh, he really, as you know, we talked about him being Mr. L.A. Well, some people might hear that and think he's only focused on L.A. He was about bringing L.A. to the world. Uh, you know, he did the Sister Cities program. When you, when you look at that sign uh, right out on the corner of City Hall, which points to all the different cities, that's Tom. He's, he's extending the reach of Los Angeles. Uh, it's, it's no accident, you know, or when, when I wanted to create the uh, Israel, California, or Israel, Los Angeles, MOU task force to extend on something the city was doing, he said, no, no, do it with the, our sister city of a lot, and we'll, we'll make it a sister city thing. And that's just Tom. He had, a, he had this world perspective. In fact, that's one of the reasons why he loved the Olympics and, and thank God for Tom, we're getting the Olympics. I mean, he was a early adopter of that, the notion of bringing the Olympics to Los Angeles. Uh, I remember he, I mean, he was, he was quoted often as saying, I, just, I think the city should always be trying to serve as a host of the games, he would say, and he, you know, what, what better ambassador for Los Angeles than Tom LaBonge? And I think he helped us ultimately get that, get that bid. Um, he talked about the, uh, the Thomas guide. I think it really should be the, the Tom LaBonge guide uh, because, or I, I assume that's what the Thomas stands for in the Thomas guide because it, it was him in so many ways. You know, we, we've talked about Tom, you know, it's just been a privilege. Like a couple of you, I had the, I had the, the privilege of having the football thrown to me when I least expected it during a council meeting once uh, as well. Uh, you know, it's just, just great great memories of Tom, but also uh, inspirations. And I think all of us, one common theme that we've talked about is not only what he's done and how he did it, but how he inspired us, each each of us and, and so many people. Uh, and that's an inspiration that, that I will hold in my heart uh, and that I will bring to work every day uh, from now and on into the future uh, to, to know that Tom LaBonge is, you know, he's always been there 
you know, a little bit of wind at our back, but now, now he really is the wind. Uh, and so again, thank all of you for, thank the family for sharing him. Uh, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm just grateful for the time that I had with him, for the lessons I've learned from him, uh, and I will continue to be inspired by him. May he rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Thank you. So, obviously, like all of you, I hate this. This is just horrible. You know, last, last I guess it was Thursday night, I was um, getting ready to go for a walk, and a phone call comes in. I didn't recognize the, <clears throat> the number, so I was a little cautious. And I took the call, and it was Tom. Hey, Gil, it's Tom. Oh, okay. Uh, so, look, um, Tom Flores, Tom Flores, Tom Flores. Like, yeah, I know Tom Flores. Uh, yeah, we got to get this motion for him. You know, I want you to do this motion on Tuesday. You know, I'm like, okay, not a problem. Well, you got to do this motion. Uh, okay, I'm like, so, all right, that's, that's good, Tom. So we talk about it for a second, and then he's moving on to, you know, Judge Carter, Judge Carter. You know, he's a good guy. Judge Carter's a good guy. You know, I want you to work with him. You know, work with him. I'm like, okay, no problem. And so he's... You know, I could see the agenda was starting to come through and, I, and somebody was waiting for me. And I said, Tom, I'm, I'm going for a walk. I'm going to go um, for this walk. So I don't, somebody's waiting for me out, out on the corner. I don't want to, you know, be late. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, go ahead. Uh, I'll call David Kim. And you get the motion. Well, what about Tuesday? So it's this whole Tom Flores motion that we're going to be doing. And this was just so uh, typical of, of Tom and you know with Debbie Kim uh, my office is an extension of his office and I you know we work for him and it's fine because uh, nothing could be more uh, important than than um, having the Labange disposition about public service he was a a servant leader uh, by definition and I am really proud of him articulating that when he was asked about his vision, uh, he noted how people uh, criticized him about not being a visionary, but he was really clear about this kind of populist servant leader model of his. And it was, I'm a visionary and my vision comes from the people. And that's one of our, our takeaways that we should have is that, that we are here simply to serve. And uh, we should never forget that. And our programs should emerge from that. And sometimes he and I would have these uh, discussions and he was really big about neighborhoods and that we had to go uh, and build neighborhoods and, and community. And I know a lot of us uh, sometimes have these lofty perspectives about what it is to uh, have these very coveted jobs working for the city. But Tom was, was very clear, we were here to serve and uh, I was uh, honored to be his friend. Uh, our friendship began in the 80s. Uh, we have a mutual friend, Larry Nicola, who had a restaurant over on Sunset and Tom and I had a little table. We would uh, sit down and share a few drinks together on uh, Friday evenings and uh, uh, I was beginning to be interested in public policy. I was a union organizer at the time. and Tom was Tom. Uh, Labange and we would always um, have a few drinks and just talk about anything. Uh, it was kind of uh, typical for us. Uh, I'm so fond of him uh, because you could always count on him. And and uh, I know some of us mentioned, you know, there's those moments where you're looking for that person who uh, will help bring you some comfort. For us in public service, you know, our jobs are difficult and. You know, we have these meetings, we run for re-election, we've got to sit up in front and wait for a lot of people to come. And sometimes uh, the subject matter is controversial and then Tom will come in and you know, well, at least Tom's here and he'll know what to say and he'll know what to do. Uh, I know at every single campaign I had, uh, he would always show up. And uh, my staff was talking to me this morning about uh, when he, uh, ultimately ran. Initially, we were 
uh, closer to, to Senator Roberti. And, and so uh, much of my staff had come from Senator Roberti's staff. And so we were initially with the Senator before, through our support for Tom, uh, we started working with him. Uh, and my staff said, he's so gracious. He's just a very, very gracious uh, man. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fond of the fact that when, uh, after Ruby passed, uh, he, I went to the Super Bowl at, uh, at your house. And um, I remember seeing the, the, the Super Bowl and, you know, it was a difficult time for me, but he was very embracing and made me feel very comfortable. And his friends did as well. And the thing I, I left and I remember telling my, my son was how Tom's friends were the friends he had like since he was born. I mean, it didn't change. Uh, and and uh, I think uh, it had been mentioned how Tom would treat people, you know, kings and queens the same way he treated, you know, the guy who greets us as we drive into City Hall. I mean, everybody was treated uh, uh, warmly and, 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 and was embraced. And it didn't matter to him. Title didn't matter to, to Tom. He, he loved everybody. And that's why everybody loved him. He loved everybody, but he loved no one more than his wife. Uh, particularly, I'm, I'm happy I was able to be helpful uh, when Bridget got sick because he was uh, in a panic and he had incredible fear. And he lived with that during that time period. And I think I was able to help him. It's the, the one blessing of bearing that cross myself that I've been able to share with people when they hit those moments and to help him prioritize, to stop the morning walks, to, you know, to spend the time appropriately. And it was, uh, I'm so happy that uh, you're a survivor. And, um, and he loved no one more than you and his family his kids, his Loyola Knights, uh, those football games where, my Lord, is everybody named LaBange? I didn't know there were so many people. <laughs> uh, and he couldn't be prouder. And so, um, and, and finally, let me say this, that uh, uh, my takeaway is that, that it's an honor to be a public servant, that with Tom, loyalty was you know, more important than anything. And he was loyal to his friends, people like Larry Nicola and Mike Haynes. I remember being able to talk to him, Mike Haynes at the uh, at City Hall when Tom introduced us. We all played ball together at the same time uh, for the city. And um, believe it or not, and um, you know, I was a quarterback, he was a center, so we had that certain bond and affinity, and then his incredible mentorship. And I think that's one of the great things about uh, his tenure is that he's taken people and mentored them to be the public servants uh, in his image. And uh, I know that Debbie Kim had a very special relationship with him. Um, and I know he's uh, took this young girl and made her into an extremely uh, powerful woman who plays a major role running my office as chief of staff. And um, uh, I called Bridget uh, when I came back from my walk, because as you guys remember, there was a collective text going on amongst us. And I had left for that walk and I came back and I was in shock. And so I called Bridget and you know, it's just, it was just shocking and remains uh, kind of difficult to accept. These are really difficult times for all of us and, and uh, his role in the city, I'm happy to see has been acknowledged uh, for his leadership and for his, his love of service. But it was really difficult. I called Debbie next and, and she was uh, inconsolable at the time. It was just uh, so tragic. And um, this will be difficult uh, as we go forward, uh, particularly for the family. Uh, grief and grieving has no time limits, uh, no boundaries, uh, no rules. Uh, and, um, and in many 
Jewish practice no limits, but uh, the only thing I can say is that uh, we have to stay focused on what it is that we did have. I can't believe this guy. He and I are about the same age, six months apart. What a rich life. I mean, people know I get up a little later than most. Uh, he didn't waste a second from sunrise to sundown. I mean, it was just nonstop. And uh, so he must have doubled the time because 67 of his life is so young, but it's closer to, must be more closer to dog years because he just put so much into each and every single day. Uh, God bless him and God bless uh, you, the family, and thank you. The last thing I'll say is thank you for sharing him because you, it's, it's great to, to, for the city to express their love for him and, and tell all these stories, but it's unfair to the family in many respects. Um, and I know this from my experiences. He was so great to the city, but it meant a lot of times that he was late for other family responsibilities or that he was leaving early for other duties. And so the sacrifice is the sacrifice of the entire LaBronge uh, clan. And we thank you for that. We thank you for giving him the foundation and the support uh, to be all that he was, Mr. Uh, L.A. We love you and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Mr. De Leon. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Uh, Colleagues, um, I, I remember um, our good friend Tom, and when he said, uh, "Hey, De Leon, uh, you know you have an Irish name, don't you? It's Gaelic, you know." And I said, "No, uh, Tom, I, thank you for telling me it was Gaelic. I, I didn't know, you know. I had an idea it was Irish, you know. I'm the only Latino kid in the classroom with an Irish, you know, first name. But he said we have a lot of things in common, you know the." The San Patrick's Brigade, the La, La Brigada San Patricio, those were the Irish Catholics, you know, in Chihuahua, in Mexico, who fought against Americans. We got a lot in common here because we're Irish brothers, we're hermanos, you know. And, 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 and Tom was great like that, always making those connections across neighborhoods, across zip codes, across uh, ethnic lines, all of us coming together. I remember Tom saying, you know, I was just elected to uh, the California State Legislature, the, the assembly. And, and Tom says, hey, De Leon, uh, let's go for a ride. I go, sure, okay, uh, where do you wanna go? He says, you don't worry about it, you know, I'll go pick you up. And he came down to, at that time, down to Avenue 26 uh, over in Lincoln Heights and came pick me up in a, a, a Crown Victoria. I thought it was LAPD detective coming to pick me up. <laughs> And uh, we go off in this Crown Victoria and we go cruising around uh, Silver Lake, uh, Los Feliz, uh, Franklin Hills. And we end up on an avenue uh, called Carmen Avenue. And we pull up into this parking lot. And they said, Tom, wh where are we? W what are we doing here? He says, uh, this looks like a monastery. And he says, you're right, De Leon, it is a monastery. It's a monastery of the angels. Right here, Cut, get out of the car. We're going to go pick up some pumpkin bread right now. Uh, he said, Tom, you know, we could have gone down the Ralphs, down the street. You know, we, you know, we could have gone anywhere else. Why we had a monastery, monastery of the angels picking up, you know, pumpkin bread. He said, hey, come on, you got to come with me. So we go up and, you know, he gets me a, a loaf of bread. He gets actually two loaves, you know, and tells me that, give it to a family member. And then uh, he says, you know, Delion, this is a the monastery of the angels. And it's a Roman Catholic convent, you know, for the women of Karachi, Pakistan. Did you know that? I, I, I did not know that. I didn't know we had a convent, you know, uh, right here in the city of LA, you know, but he made sure that I knew that it was a Roman Catholic convent specifically for the women of Karachi, Pakistan. And uh, to some of the points that uh, all of our, my good friends on, on the council just mentioned, this man was, you know, so local, but so global at the same time. And 
as we cruise around his district, the city council district, near Griffith Park, going down Los Feliz Boulevard, up Hillhurst, down Hillhurst, uh, Vermont. Uh, and he says, uh, he puts his arm out while he's cruising at, in the Crown Victoria. He says, so De Leon, what are you doing up north in the state capital? What are you doing for me? Because I need some money. How much money are you bringing down from Sacramento, down to Los Angeles? Because I got several areas here that I want to convert them into parks. I got some open space here. Let's create some parks. Come on, Delio, we got to work together. You know, I'm a Marshall High School guy. You know, yeah, I know you're from San Diego. He knew exactly where I was from. You know, yeah, I know you're from San Diego, but you're representing the east side. It's Roosevelt High School, like Gil Cedillo over there, and it's Garfield High School, even though it's unincorporated East LA. I know that rivalry, you know. Come on, Delio, bring some money down to LA. So I need some park money. Uh, but the way he did it uh, was, uh, it, it, it touched me as, as a human being, as, as, as who Tom is uh, and who Tom represented, his values as an Angelino. And, and the last thing I want to say is I, I recall one of the first times I came down to City Hall as a member of the California State Legislature. And uh, I walked into uh, the City Council Chambers and I, I didn't know what the protocols were. And so I, I, I didn't know where to, to stand. I didn't know where to move forward. There was a LAPD officer in the front. With the, I'm walking up, you know, in between the pews and, and, and Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez said something that kind of stood out to me in that Tom made you, Tom made you feel so good. He made you feel so good about yourself. So as I walk in between the pews in the city council chambers, not really knowing, you know, where I should stand, what the proper protocol is, do I cross this imaginary line, you know, into the horseshoe, you know, Tom sees me and Tom, you know, just, you know, with his arm, just says, De Leon, come over here, you know? And I wasn't sure if I, I should do it or not. You know, the presiding officer at the time, I forget who it was, but De Leon, come over here. And I, I crossed that imaginary line. I was a little nervous, even though I was a member of the California State Legislature. And I, 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 I crossed that line and he gave me a big, you know, bear hug and introduced me and, and he made me feel like a million bucks. You know, he made me feel like a million bucks. He made me feel good about myself. And again, you know, to all my wonderful colleagues around the horseshoe, um, it just validates, you know, um, who he is as a human being. You know, Bridget and, and, and to all the kids, um, Tom was a, a man, as you know, your husband, your partner of so many decades, your father, uh, a man uh, with a heart of gold. And he is our guardian angel uh, for our city council, for our family, for the whole city of Los Angeles. So to, to the Labange family, you know, que descanse en paz nuestro hermano Tomas. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. De Leon. Mr. Price. Thank you, Madam President. To the family, I just want to express my condolences uh, and those of, of uh, citizens in CD9. And I just want to co-sign every single thing uh, my colleagues have said, every remembrance, uh, every thought. I just want to echo that. You know, Tom was a great friend uh, of the city, uh, and he enjoyed every part of the city including CD9. Uh, he uh, regaled me with stories uh, when we served together on the council uh, for those two years uh, about CD9. Uh, he knew about Central Avenue uh, and uh, was always uh, ready to share a story or a thought. Had a great deal of, of affection, of course, for Expo Park uh, and specifically the Coliseum. Uh, and he was just a number one uh, number one cheerleader. Uh, when I uh, was president of the commission, housing commission, and 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 since then, 
Uh, Tom was a frequent uh, attendee at the meetings. Um, uh, Councilman uh, Billy Thomas will recall that as well. Uh, but he was a frequent uh, attendee at the meetings, always with an idea, suggestion, a historical footnote. His latest project was uh, uh, making sure that the Raiders uh, had uh, proper recognition uh, there on the uh, uh, at the Coliseum. But just always a positive, progressive person. Uh, you know, he was always sharing information. Uh, we, you know, we talked about the, the articles, the, the books, the, the letters, the mementos, especially uh, when he was leaving uh, office, uh, you know, he, he sent me a whole stack of, of, uh, of materials, uh, some historic and some of, of special interest. But he took an interest in you. And so I just, again, want to uh, say, Tom, uh, a tremendous legacy of service, uh, not just in his district, uh, but citywide. He cared about the people. He cared about the, the institutions. Uh, and he you cared about for working Busy. together. And so oh. I'm just uh, proud to yeah. have known him. He was a real positive force uh, and always someone who encouraged the best of all of us. He will be sorely missed at a time when we really need him now. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Price. Mr. Ridley Thomas. Madam President, colleagues, the immediate and extended uh, family of Tom LaVange. I wish to say that Tom and I met as appointee to Tom Bradley's Youth Advisory Council in the mid 70s and our history moved from there. We overlapped the city council for a year and some months. We kept it moving in terms of our, our relationship. Rarely did we interact uh, when he didn't ask about uh, Avis, when he didn't ask about Sebastian and Sinclair, he celebrated the fact that they were Cubs. So there's a lot of personal uh, anecdotes to which I could refer that uh, brought Tom LaBonge and Mark Ridley Thomas together. He was fond of reminding me when I met you, you were Mark Thomas. Now you're Mark Ridley Thomas. Uh, he knew the history of the city, but he also knew personal history. And I think uh, I'll choose to remember Tom in this way. Uh, he reminded us of the city's assets uh, from Griffith Park to Exposition Park, as was mentioned, uh, and he had the capacity to interpret these assets for the benefit of all. He talked about the Coliseum as being the cathedral of sports in America. Uh, he moved on and recognized that there or other assets that need to be uh, celebrated throughout uh, the city of Los Angeles. And each council member uh, knows that of his or her own accord. I think we shall remember him in terms of his uh, sense of generosity, uh, personal and collective. Tom was a generous individual. Uh, his aunt, Frances LaBonge, whom I taught at Immaculate Heart High School, reminded me of that, and he reminded me of her with regularity. Uh, and then finally, I just simply want to say, uh, Tom uh, left with us uh, a clear indication of who we might aspire to be as local elected officials. In other words, he saw uh, the issue of constituent services as the bread and butter of what it meant to serve uh, the people. Uh, Tom left an indelible mark uh, on uh, our city, on our lives individually and corporately. And for that, uh, we should be forever uh, grateful. I am personally uh, honored to have known him, uh, to have spent uh, the kind of time that we spent. And it was a good thing for Tom to be a self-assured person that didn't have to agree with you 100% of the time to affirm your own humanity and sense of purpose in life. 
And so these are lessons from Tom that will uh, hopefully inform the way in which we uh, see our roles prospectively. And I simply want to say in a deep regard to God be the glory for the life of Tom Obamish. Madam President. Thank you, sir. And members, thank you so much for your amazing words and wonderful memories of our beloved Tom. There is nothing in the world that Tom loved more than his beloved Bridget and his beautiful kids, uh, Mary Kate and Charles. I'd like to give an opportunity to Bridget to say a few words. I know she's with us, so are the kids. Can you hear us, Bridget? Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. Um, first of all, I, I just want to say, um, ha having left the city family, um, uh, five and a half years ago, uh, We were cool with that. We were good. You know, we had done our job and we enjoyed, um, we raised our kids and babies. I, actually, before we were married, I rolled with Tom all the time. I went on his wild ride and I fell in love with his wild ride. I loved it. I loved city service and I understood it. And, and I, and I, uh, I got it. Um, having left the family, uh, the city family, we were good. And Tom, Tom just, couldn't stay home. He couldn't. And uh, I just want to say the Thursday night he died here in his living room, um, the city family showed up and it was unexpected. And it was glorious. It was really glorious. And I thank you for that. And I know he was in this room. He, he saw it. And I, please excuse my my, my raw grief, but I too thought I was gonna go before Tom and I didn't know how he was gonna age in this world. I wanna tell you that his giant heart had lots of chunks take out of it. And just the night before with the assault on the Capitol, crushed him, it crushed him. Um, what was happening in this world and in this country crushed him. And I'm going to be honest about that. And I have to tell you that I now understand. Uh, I didn't know how I was going to bring him home from City Hall and have him survive. I know now that his life from a child to this young age of 67 was of service. I know it. He loved being a public school boy. He loved serving public. He loved being public. He called himself that. I would say to him most recently, please, Tom, please, please slow down. Please stop. You're going to kill yourself. Um, and he would look through me and he, I could see it in his eyes. I want you all to know. It didn't matter what anybody said about him. It didn't matter. It didn't matter what I said to him. He was going to keep going. I could see it in his eyes. He was defiant in a very sweet way. I want to let you know on the day he died, he walked 13 and a half thousand steps. We found it on his phone. He hiked in the morning. He hiked every morning for 50 years to see the sunrise. I know now that he was running because he was running out of time. He was frantic and he, he sat here with his paper clippings and his photos and his, 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 uh, I called it my husband's museum of crap. It's, uh, just all the, our whole house is full of city hall, 40 years of city hall. And, uh, it was constantly swirling around our house and he, I just want to let you know, he, you're all telling us things that we didn't know about him. He left here and we just didn't know. My, my family or my friends would say, where's Tom? And I said, out doing Tom LaBanche things. I don't know. 
but I knew he was going to come back. And uh, he never told us what he did. And I'm finding out where he was the whole time. Um, I hope he didn't bother you. I would tell him to stop bothering people. <laughs> I, I didn't know, but he couldn't, he couldn't help himself. He just really couldn't help himself. I know all he was made for. It sounds so silly and so goofy. But all he made it for is to be this guy with props and this giant, giant. Uh, sometimes breaking, sometimes filling heart. And maybe his heart got too much exercise. It was too, you know, too much work. Um, I have to tell you too, he never wanted to be a policy wonk. He didn't want to follow rules. He didn't want to, it wasn't his style. And he was fly by the seat of his pants. He was madcap. He was haphazard in, in personal life and in political life. Loved it all. Uh, he didn't care. And so uh, I want to let you know our family is morphing right now. We are understanding that our, our Tom LaBonge is something much, much larger and much more divine than the feet he had here on this ground. And I wanted to tell you too, that when he left his body, I, I saw it and I, I just want to let you know that I, I wanted to shake him alive because I wanted him to be here because he wasn't done. But I remember now I, I grabbed his face and I said, let your spirit be someplace else. I knew it was here. And I know when the stories are coming back to us, we can hear. We can hear it, and that makes me happy. I feel like he's been a, a donor. Everyone's going to walk around with a little piece of him so I can know he's there. And I also want to tell you, in his fashion, he was so proud of Mark Ridley Thomas. You guys go way back. I remember you when I first met Tom in 1979 on my blind date. And I, I rolled with Tom to everything about him because that's how we got to be with him. And that's how we got to be with them. That's why our kids were of service. That's, we didn't want to be in public. We didn't want to, we didn't need accolades. We just had to be with them because that's where he was. Um, Nithya, he's so proud of you. He's so proud of you. And, and I, Monica, I, I just, I, I hate doing this. I know this is what he would do when he'd run out. He wouldn't tell people everything. I just, he, he's so proud of all of you. And, and uh, he, uh, he just, uh, he loved his life, but he ran out of batteries finally. And time chased him and uh, time caught up with him. And uh, uh, I was here in the house and he uh, did it his way. It was very quiet and he just laid down and went to sleep. And uh, he was super happy, super, super happy. I would tell him, Tom, put down your stuff, stop the paper clippings and the photos stop like please stop stop and he'd say to me Bridget I'm happy please I'm happy that's what he'd say and as at the end of the day we left him alone and let him do his thing and he did it his way he really did do it his way um he um and he wouldn't do it any other way and uh I hope I hope uh, I hope you feel him every day, and I hope you you take a little a piece with him wherever you go. And uh, thank you so much for uh, tolerating him and let letting Tom Labonge be Tom Labonge. Thank you. Thanks a lot. We thank love you. you. Love you all. Thank you for this. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bridget, Mary Kate, and Charles for being with us this morning as we um celebrate the life of our dear friend and colleague and mentor, Tom LaBanche. Thank you very much for your strength, Bridget, for your beautiful words. We are an extension of you. We are a city family. We will always be here for all three of you. Members, we will adjourn in the memory of our beloved friend, colleague, and mentor, Tom LaBanche. May he rest in peace. Thank you.